We've never had a red background here in the TV studio slash radio studio, but we do today because clearly the incremental rollout of a jihadist Tet offensive is taking place across the world with daily attacks from Asia to Africa to the Middle East to Europe to the United States and other areas of North America. Matt Bracken, former Navy SEAL, enemies foreign and domestic, who's been predicting Tet 2, will be joining us. Joe Biggs is on the ground in Orlando, Florida. Leanne McAdoo will be popping in as well. She just got back to Austin. She is hopping mad on them blaming the Second Amendment and calling this a homophobic hate crime. And then having all these imams on TV lecturing everyone not to politicize it as if they're the fount of wisdom when in the Quran and in 11 Muslim nations it says kill homosexuals. So the way they sit there and bring these people in, the so-called liberals, and then they attack and then we get the blame. This guy's parents were brought in in the 80s. He cheered when the World Trade Centers fell, witnesses have said, and he worked for a branch of Homeland Security, of course, because there's an obsession with these Islamists with running the airports, running everything. They want the control. In England, most of the new police chiefs, most are Islamists. And the government, the leftists, want to work with these totalitarians for the first generation in exchange for giving them current control and power. It is a total takeover. Now, Paul Watson filed this report in the early morning hours yesterday when it was only 20-something dead. Now it's 50-something dead. But his short report says it all. We're going to air it right now, the truth about the Orlando mass murder of 49 people. We're here in Dresden covering Bilderberg, but of course we've had the massacre in Orlando, Florida. 20 people, now they're saying up to 30, shot dead by an individual who has been identified as Omar Mateen, uh, somebody of Afghan descent, who of course is a Muslim and the religion of peace strikes. Again, imagine my shock. So the top trending hashtag on Twitter right now is gun control now. That's right, the trendies are already out in force trying to seize on that narrative. They don't seem to be as concerned about the fact that in 11 Islamic countries, gay people are executed. That's right, in 11 countries, state execution of homosexuals is still government policy. So where's the hashtag stop Islam now? How many more innocent people need to die before we acknowledge that Islam has a violence problem? Why are the trendies bleating on about gun control when this is all about Islam? We had Paris, we had Brussels. Now this has come home, it's come to America. And again, the narrative has completely flipped. So again, we've got people like Sally Cohn of CNN saying, tweeting out, racist extremist hate is a problem with any religion, not just Islam. A single Muslim just killed more gays than so-called gay bashing killed in the last 50 years. So how in the hell is every religion responsible for violence against gay people? Completely insane. So again, Trump warned about Brussels before it happened. He's been proven right yet again. And hug a Muslim didn't work after the Paris attacks, did it? Pray for Orlando is not going to work after these attacks. And this isn't a problem with gun control. It isn't a problem with lone wolves. It isn't even a problem with jihadists. It's a problem with Islam. Where are all the leftists protesting against gays being thrown off buildings by ISIS, by countries like Saudi Arabia still executing homosexuals? We have sources in Washington. We have sources in the Pentagon that are trusted and that are patriots. Sources that have helped expose the fact that Obama to the Muslim Brotherhood, as well as with Hillary, has been aiding and abetting al-Qaeda, now known as Islamic State, to confuse the public. Infowars.com has been at the very forefront of breaking this dangerous information in the last four plus years. And of course, Cy Hirsch came on earlier this year to thank the broadcast uh, and to concur with our sources and analysis that the Pentagon, namely the Army, for four years had been telling Obama, we are not going to aid Al-Qaeda slash ISIS, we are not gonna be their air force, and that the Pentagon began feeding intelligence to the Russians, who were already on the ground there, by the way, uh, to stop the Islamic State takeover. 
Islamic State uh, was allied heavily, of course, uh, and financed by Saudi Arabia, its progenitor, its main backer. NATO, of course, has been backing it. Uh, we have the leftists in Europe, Hollande, Merkel, backing it heavily. They planned the entire destabilization program starting in Libya. Then it was to move uh, to the east, to its neighbor, Egypt, and then right through up uh, into Turkey and then into the rest of Europe. They had the UN project headed up by the EU founder, Peter Sutherland, advertised uh, going back four years ago that refugees should come to Europe, made the preparations for that, and then had them in mass come in as a time bomb that Saudi Arabia and the leftists can activate anytime they want through the Saudi Arabian command uh, to engage in massive terror attacks all over Europe and the United States. This is being used to hold the West hostage, uh, certain segments of the globalist combine believe. It is an insane, over-the-top, bold move, especially when you know that it was at least a five- to six-year-old plan and that when the Pentagon broke with the plan, when they discovered it and stopped playing along with it, they still went ahead with the program to fill Europe and the United States with the jihad forces masked as refugees, 80% military-age men. So they're putting their sleeper cells in place right now. They are massing them right now, but because they are not directed, they are, to use my allegory, it's like fire ants climb up your leg, and then when they get in a certain mass, one of them releases a pheromone saying, I'm about to sting, and then all of them instantaneously, within a millisecond, start stinging. That pheromone is released so fast, their antennas pick it up, smell it. That's what their antennas do is basically smell. That's their noses. And boom, they hit you. And that's how this works. And I can look at the metrics, talking to top terrorism experts on and off air. We're going to see terror attacks increase at an exponential rate. And so that's what's been happening. They've been doubling every year worldwide for the last five years since this uh, electronic jihad began and then kicked off the Arab Spring run by Google, the White House, NATO, the globalist. I mean, this is a real move. This is happening, but some of the fire ants are firing too early because they're not under command and control. The globalists breed them in their basement like black widows, as I've said many times, dump them into our political homes, dump them into our beds, and then they know the black widows are going to bite us. But they're not in full control of them. They've just released them. Or it's like putting rattlesnakes in somebody's bed or water moccasins in somebody's swimming pool. This has been done, and uh, thank God they are not well-organized and ever well-directed. You certainly can't say that Muslim Arab men are cowards. No, they're not. They're not cowards. On average, I mean, they're, they're willing to die. They do hit cowardly targets. But they certainly are uncoordinated in their historical behaviors and activities for whatever reason. And... It's like, you know, three years ago when Obama has his red line on the anniversary of the red line. Oh, my gosh, Assad launched chemical weapons on his own people. And the jihadis put out videos a la akbar with their Al-Qaeda brigade, bin Laden brigade, black flags, saying they launched the chemical attacks. They, they wouldn't even follow orders to not celebrate it. They couldn't even run a false flag against Assad because they wanted to sit there and brag about it. Because that's how they count coup. It's how they you know, go up in the world. It's a, it's a narcissistic, you know, kind of wannabe rock star deal. A lot of Midwestern girls and East Coast girls and Florida girls and Texas girls and, you know, Pacific Northwestern girls, whatever, they want to be movie stars. And so they get on buses or airplanes, and they go to L.A., and sorry, baby, there's no, no movie star jobs for you, but you can start at the bottom in pornography or as a prostitute. Well, Arab men and jihadis, but it's, 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 it's Muslims in general, but particularly Arab men, it's the rock star thing is you don't want to go be a Hollywood star. You don't want to be a basketball player or a soccer player. You want to be a jihad star. And on Muslim television, these people are rock stars. And their families just get lavished and get, you know, millions of dollars in some cases. Uh, usually it's about $100,000 uh, whenever uh, their son uh, takes part in something like this. Let's say you live on the West Bank, you know, can't pay your bills or whatever. Well, just get into Israel, stab a few people, and your family will be well taken care of, given a 10-year salary, basically. 
Now, you can talk all day about, well, the West is helping stir this up and, you know, the globalist stages events. Yes, I'm an expert on that. I've made many films. I've written books on it. I, I've immersed myself in it. I was the first to say 9-11 was a false flag inside job with our government working with radical Islam to bring in this new class of civilizations. Criminal elements of our government, bare minimum, stood down. So that is a false flag. I put a video out yesterday to bait the media saying, Orlando's a false flag. I said, Orlando's a false flag. Then I said, but before that gets quoted improperly, radical Islam's real. This is a real attack. But Obama opened the borders up knowing these people would attack and brought them in and has covered up the past jihad attacks at Fort Hood and San Bernardino and in Philadelphia, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps recruiting centers, on and on and on. 12 attacks this year so far, they've swept under the rug, exponentially growing in the U.S. alone. So it's a false flag when you open the door. When, when you know somebody's planning something and you protect them. In fact, that's not even the right term. You could use it. It's somewhat accurate. Stand down is really what we should say. Obama has, has, has ordered a stand down, and we have the proof here today. Let these people in, knowing who they are, and let them attack us. But a stand down leads to the false flag. Because if you're behind it, if you're letting it happen, you're now aiding and abetting it. For what reason? The false flag has to have a reason. They're saying, we're coming after your guns. Hillary, Obama, Bernie Sanders, they want to ban all semi-auto firearms. They're coming for our guns. Doesn't matter this guy got a New York firearms license, it's hard to get. Doesn't matter he worked for Homeland Security as a contractor. Doesn't matter that he ran around in NYPD outfits. It doesn't matter. This guy had been watched for years. The FBI had been ordered to stand down, just like with the Boston Bombers. Same MO. It's all in the news today. The same pattern. And then he's allowed to attack. And that is to encourage more people to come here and to see that you can be a martyr here and you can get away with it. Now, at one level, they don't want too many of these to happen too early until they get all their people in place. But they want to have a few of them to try to brand it as homophobia and hate crimes to pass anti-free speech laws and anti-gun laws. But they want to wait till after the election. And boy, who's been proven correct? Who's been proven right? Well, it's, it's, been, it's been Donald Trump. He said there will be more San Bernardinos, there will be more Brussels, Belgium's attacks. There will be, absolutely. And he gets up there and talks about no-go zones in areas of Europe that we have experienced. These Muslims can't even get along with each other in their own countries. They constantly killing each other, no matter how radical the nation is. Saudi Arabia has to export these people to our countries because they'll attack there even though the government kills gays, executes them. But not a word from Gawker, not a word from Reddit, not a word from Facebook, because you know what we have stacks of news today up on Infowars.com? Here's the rest of the story. They're not just coming after your Second Amendment. Some Facebooks with half a million supporters, with famous authors that pointed out that this is Islamic terror, which is admitted, are having their accounts terminated, not just suspended. Others are having them suspended. Now you think about that. That's what Germany's now doing as well. We have now gotten that bad, and I've got the articles right here when we come back, that if you come out on your Facebook and say, this is wrong, this is Islamic terror, they're suspending accounts. Reddit is banning users, deletes comments that say Orlando terrorist was a Muslim. Ladies and gentlemen, think about that. They don't want you to know. They want to project it onto you and your family and onto me and my family and say our Second Amendment and our open free culture caused this to happen. Orlando shooting suspect identified as Omar Matin, registered Democrat of Afghan descent with firearms license. Orlando shooter identified as U.S. citizen. Orlando killer worked for company transporting illegal immigrants into the U.S., was interviewed by FBI three times in the last two years. He's got family members out that it end up run groups against Trump who actually are organizing, bringing the refugees here and getting the $17,000 plus dollars a year of welfare each person gets. See, they organize it. Look at this. Brother-in-law of nightclub killer hates Trump, works with refugees. And it turns out that the other brother was an activist in this and ran security for it. 
you literally have ISIS supporting, ISIS pledged, ISIS took responsibility within two hours. The media for eight or nine hours wouldn't say it here. There were still articles last night in the news saying it was a hate crime against gay people. It was a jihad attack. And yes, that's part of it. But you ignore why it was done. And so you have the people completing the smuggling process with Obama, ignoring law, not vetting them, bringing them in. Trump says we got to vet these people. And they go, racist, racist. Yeah, how, how'd that racist call help you when most of the people that got shot were uh, Latino uh, there at this event? You know that, right? How'd that work out for you? Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're here live. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Thank you for joining us. There was an article from World Net Daily yesterday that in the avalanche of news didn't get any attention. Uh, Kit Daniels has written an article around it. It just went live on Infowars.com, and it is just adds to everything we already knew. This is so bombshell. If Trump doesn't use this against Hillary, he is uh, insane. And I know he's not insane. He's crazy like a fox. So we're going to get this info to Trump. We need to tweet this at Donald J. Trump. Uh, right now, and we need your help to get this article that just went uh, up on The Real Alex Jones on Twitter and send this out to Donald J. Trump and others. Because World Net Daily broke this, and we actually were just talking to Joseph Farah about getting the whistleblower on from DHS. I'm talking minutes ago. And this got no attention. This is incredible. Hillary's State Department blocked investigation into Orlando Killer's Mosque. Just like the Justice Department blocked an investigation into the San Bernardino Mosque and the particular husband and wife team that were going to Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, just like this latest shooter did. Isn't that incredible? Hillary Clinton's State Department shut down an investigation of the mosque Orlando killer Omar Mateen attended because it unfairly singled out Muslims. And this is the mosque, we, we have the clip, we played it yesterday, where the imam goes on the news and says, out of compassion, we must kill homosexuals. It is the law, we must kill them. In fact, let's just play this guy. He has the slimiest voice. This is in English. And he's like perching like a, like a buzzard or a carrion crow. Here it is. Death is the sentence. I mean, look. There's nothing to be embarrassed about this. We have to have that compassion for people. With homosexuals, it's the same. Out of compassion, let's get rid of him now. Let's get rid of him. I mean, he's like a cartoon character out of uh, Pink Panther or something. And so you have to get rid of him. We have to kill him out of compassion. Yeah. The slimy, wimpy guy. I mean, this, why are these guys so freaking wimpy? I, I, but it's just so evil. But let me tell you who's really evil is the controlled, filthy left blaming patriots and veterans and gun owners and true constitutional classical liberals, Thomas Jefferson types like myself. And I'm not comparing myself to Thomas Jefferson. I'm saying I like his views. A classical liberal. Yes, I can sign on to that. George Washington was a classical conservative. I, I mean, I follow kind of a mix of their two views. I really resonate with both of them. Jefferson sometimes probably went too far when it came to freedom. He was a supporter of the French Revolution early on until they even tried to kill him. And then had to admit later that Washington had been right. But, but I digress here. Guns, in areas that have guns, you have lower crime. And you've got these domesticated liberals and gays and people that just think part of being gay or part of being liberal, as MSNBC told them, is you're disarmed. The MSNBC crew has bodyguards. Bloomberg has bodyguards. Michael Moore has bodyguards. Do you understand that if they would have had concealed carry in that nightclub, you would not have had this happen? Do you understand of a few people? But you have laws even against the people that work there having guns. It's insane to have a giant nightclub. They can be the target of robbery, you name it, and not have at least one paid cop there. I mean, if I ran a nightclub or even a big restaurant or a movie theater nowadays, I would have two cops there during peak hours. They're not very expensive. $25, $30 an hour. It absolutely, again, if you're not going to let people defend themselves, at least have off-duty police officers there.
And there was an off-duty cop that stopped this. And now we learned some coward wanted to get out with their boyfriends. And so he blocked the door so that the guy couldn't chase him so nobody else could get out. That's like the Titanic. Oh, my gosh, we're sinking. Lock up, you know, the, the people in steerage and the people in third class so they can't get out and get to the lifeboats. And you'd have two people in one lifeboat and ten in another. And, you know, the lifeboats could carry 100 people each. But everybody ran off, so almost everybody else drowned because the average lifeboat had like 15 people in it. Totally sick, totally evil, totally out of control. And nowadays you see this, whether it's in Korea or whether it's in Greece or whether it's in Italy, you know, the, a ship will be run aground and the captain just abandons ship on a helicopter in the first two minutes and then it takes hours for it to sink. It's like people are so self-centered, they just, they have this thrill in, in screwing others over. So in a way, who's worse, the guy that went and killed 49 people or the people that out of their own selfishness and cowardice aided him in doing it? We've got that clip coming up, too. This is just over the top. Stay with us. You ever wondered how the New World Order would take down America? It's allied with radical Islam. Russia knows that and has come out and exposed that and gotten into the fact that they are going to be resisting it. Say what you want about Russia. It is not allied with radical Islam. The criminals that run our government are. And this story is up on Infowars.com. Coworker, reported nightclub killer, ignored because of political correctness. Bosses refused to act on Omar Mateen's unhinged behavior because he was a Muslim. Yeah, two years ago, while working for contractors under DHS, he would threaten people, you better watch it, I've got terrorist ties. I'll kill you. And he's just such a punk, such a little, little piece of garbage trying to be a man. They all have this gangbanger crazy look in their eye like they're going to be somebody. And I'm telling you, it's this mutation between kind of hip-hop gangster culture and Islam that is creating these slugs. And if you want to know the M.O. of the first wave of this new Islamic Tet Offensive against the West, it's going to be domestic Muslims, first generation, that's who it's been, who don't feel accepted in society and who want to be somebody. They want to be rock stars. And then you got their other family members every time who are involved in the whole Democratic Party apparatus of the Islamification of the country, bringing in more jihadists and then making money off the process of housing them and getting them on welfare, just like Democrats bring the illegals in from Latin America and China and teach them how to get in the system. And the government pays up to $7,500 a month for groups of three, quote, migrants in your home. And these are just the tow hook, the throw cable for the next bigger wave just like we told you two years ago, the migrant wave out of Latin America was going to be much, much bigger when the next wave came, and now they're saying it's three times what the last one was. We're talking doubling and tripling every few years how big this takeover is. And look, if you're watching us on TV, the gang-banging nature of the disgusting, narcissistic selfie. If I see one more man or one more woman making duck lips, I'm going to pull what's left of my hair out. It's this self-satisfied, I'm smart, I'm cool. Here, here. Where, where men and women go, and it's like, I'm cool. And they take a picture of themselves. What in Hades is going on? And then I love how there's no logic in these people. He goes, he, he's a Hillary supporter, registered Democrat. His family's involved in the globalist takeover. You got Uma, whatever her name is, the jihadi with Saudi Arabia and hooked all up with the open borders and... The rest of it, I mean, basically, Saudi Arabia controls Hollywood to a great extent, tells Hollywood what they can and can't do, and then, and then the, the, quote, gay community grovels to you and says, we're sorry about right-wing hate mongers not liking you. We know you're sweet. You know, we know you love us. We know it's lies that you kill gays. Drop on by. Have a good time. Come up and see me sometime, baby. And they come and shoot you. And then the liberal sides turn around and attack. Guess who today? Me, as usual. I'm an Islamophobe. And they make these major Hollywood movies now. 
where they just have random people stand up at town halls and go, I hate black people and I hate Muslims and I, and I want to kill everybody because I heard it from Alex Jones. Alex Jones. It's a David Cross's movie. I mean, it's just, and it turns out it's all government funded. To just, to just put these messages out, why? Because I don't want my daughters to be sexually mutilated and have bags put over their heads. You're like, oh, that's not going to happen to you. Maybe not this generation. What about if you're in Macedonia, it's already happening? What if you're in Serbia, it's already happening? And then if you fight back in Macedonia or Serbia, they call you a war criminal and come bomb you. So let me get into the news in these clips. Uh, I want to thank Drudge for caring about the country and magnifying the World Net Daily story that we just basically expanded on uh, up at Infowars.com. It's on the top corner of DrudgeReport.com. We'll put it on screen for TV viewers. Hillary State Department blocked investigation into Orlando Killer's mosque. Boom. We click on that for you. And it follows the exact same MO that we have seen time and time again. San Bernardino, the FBI was blocked two years before the attack from investigating the mosque and the specific two shooters. And the agents were put under criminal investigation for possible indictment for civil rights violations. Hillary Clinton State Department shut down an investigation of the mosque. Orlando killer Omar Mateen attended because it unfairly singled out Muslims. That's right. There's no Islamic terror. Hillary won't even say it. I can't go to Saudi Arabia and wear a cross around my neck. I will be arrested. If I was gay and walked down the street and openly admitted, holding hands with another man, that I was, I would be taken to jail, convicted, and executed within one month. My head would be chopped from my shoulders. Now, you can debate whether... I don't like what's being pushed in the schools. I don't like the brazen arrogance uh, of the leftist gay community that just wants to be the center of attention with all this flamboyant bull and says, I, you know, they have to run all the agendas and run all the education systems, you know, so that, so that they're not treated unfairly. You want to grandstand and, and, and take over the culture? I, I'm against that. I'm against a cult taking over. And that's what leftist gaydom is. It's just another globalist cult. I don't hate you for who you are or, or, or who you're attracted to. I mean, give me a break. You just want to be a victim, so you want to sit here and claim I'm against you. It's a total load of bull. The left chooses Islam over gays, and now 100 people are dead or maimed in Orlando. And then it's photos of Islamic State, how they execute people. They get up on a tall building and sit there all day and sometimes and kill over 100 people at once, throwing homosexual men off of buildings. And the weird thing about Islam is you can have sex with somebody that doesn't have hair on them if it's a young boy, but you don't with another man. It should be the other way around. Having sex with the kids illegal and, 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 and degenerate. And I, I just, I'm telling you, man, it's freakazoid. It's freakazoid. It's crazy, and to watch all these stupid, trendy social justice warriors putting rainbow flags up all over their Facebook and Twitters, that's not the answer to stop the killing. You think you're going to reason with an Islamic fascist? They're going to come and kill you, so go ahead and hang that out. They're coming to your gay pride parades. They, they're coming looking for the flag, stupid. You're not going to sit there and fly it and then have them capitulate. See, that's been done here because the West is open and loving and, 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 and the fount of the Renaissance and the Enlightenment and live and let live. And you think bullying and taking over the culture here was, was some conquering conquest you were on? No. You're trying to take over free thought in the West and get rid of our free speech via political correctness and take over the educational systems and ban what Christian preachers can say and do. Do you understand, in a true open society, you can have any view you want or practice you want as long as you don't hurt other people. Comprende? Do you get that through your fake liberal brain? I'm a liberal, you're not. Do you understand that? It's not liberal to ban speech. It's not liberal to want to arrest preachers that criticize homosexuality. It's not liberal to say we're going to ban the word mother and father or he or she in, in, in school entrance forms because someone might not have a mother or father and it hurts them. If I have a mother and father, that's my heritage. I'm allowed to have something 
that someone else doesn't have. Sorry it hurts their feelings. This is the ultimate bizarro collectivism trash of a group of mentally ill control freaks that want to take control of society. And they'll use any agenda they can to get it, civil rights, gay rights, whatever. To bulldoze society and tell an open society that has a soft heart, you talk like we say, you do what we say, you live like we say. Gee, that sounds like Islam to me, just another variant of it. A lot of the liberals want to have sex with kids, so does the Islamists that follow Orthodox Islam. And really what you people are, are a bunch of gangs. You're a bunch of thugs. And that's why the left likes Islam, because it's right up your alley, isn't it? It's a frickin' cult. And I'm going to stand against you. And I'm going to stand against Orthodox Islam. The globalists want a clash of civilizations. They're going to get one, but not the one they thought. So that's what this comes down to. But our story's up on DrudgeReport.com. Hillary, State Department, blocked investigation to Orlando Killer's mosque. It's so huge. It needs to go total viral. I put it out on Facebook, on Twitter. Forward this to everybody you know. Forward this to Donald Trump. In fact, can we click on the Twitter and see if that tweet went out during the break, please? Let's uh, click on my Twitter, or let's pull up my Twitter account at Real Alex Jones. Just ask everybody to get this out and to also get these articles out. There it is. It needs to be retweeted everywhere. At Donald Trump. Co-worker reported nightclub killer ignored because of political correctness. That needs to go viral. Orlando shooting suspect identified as registered Democrat of Afghan descent. Orlando killer worked for a company transporting illegal immigrants inside the U.S. was interviewed by FBI three times, but they were ordered to stand down. People say, oh, that's a false flag. Oh, the FBI did it. No, they didn't. They tried to stop it. Then the higher-ups let it happen. Because they think you're so stupid, they're going to spin into hate crime legislation and dun, dun, dun. Let's get this first clip ready. I need to start getting the clips. Hillary Clinton coming out and blaming the Second Amendment and saying, ban all semi-autos. That's what that wicked woman wants to do. It's also what Bernie Sanders is pushing. This guy worked for Homeland Security, had a license. It's super hard to get in New York City and a license to get in Florida, and he worked in Homeland Security and all this secretive... Who do you think ships in the C-130s and, 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 and 747s and 777s that land at airports everywhere? And then the locals report, yeah, nothing's being checked. They're just loaded on buses and brought in. They're just sent into their communities, and that's why suddenly I go to downtown Austin or North Austin or South Austin because as a culture, Muslims like to go out to markets at night. I guess that's kind of like where they hang out. That's what people used to do, too, in, 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 in our more rural times. And you go everywhere now, and there are Muslims in hijabs and in full burqas. Because my alma mater got 230-plus Islamicists just this year. My high school, I called a bunch of others. They all got hundreds. And elementary's got hundreds. And the middle school's got hundreds. It's thousands of kids out of Syria that were invaders just in the last 12 months, that's confirmed. And they tell us it's only a few thousand total in the whole country? Baloney. It was Jakari Jackson and Don Salazar two years ago went down to the border and talked to the McCallum emergency management head who said, no, we're ordered to keep it secret, but I'm not going to, I'm going to tell you. And he, he got on camera and said, we, we complete the smuggling process. They load them on those buses and give them vouchers. And then that came out last week. DHS came out again. And, and Border Patrol came out and said, yeah, we're ordered to load them on contractor buses and just bring them in. It's the same thing, folks. I don't know the numbers. But every town's got Muslims being brought in now. And I don't mean the ones that were here before that were like getting nuclear, you know, degrees or engineering degrees and who, you know, I mean, I've got some Muslim friends in high school and college. I go over to their house for dinner and the mother's taught being nice and they're not wearing a thing on their head. And, you know, and they're saying, you know, Saddam's not really a bad guy. Your government wants to overthrow him to put radical Muslims in. I mean, I've known Iraqis and other people that, that knew all about this and actually warned me about radical Islam. See, I don't believe this thing that all Muslims are really sneaking around planning to get you. There are the radical Muslims that are taking over and, and, and want to dominate Islam and that pretty much always have, and there are those that actually want to be freer. And they are moral, hardworking, good people. But this isn't them. They're bringing in blue-collar, ignorant people who kill each other from the worst parts of the Middle East en masse. I mean, I was in Toronto to speak with George Norrie earlier this year. Or was it last year? Time flies. I think it was earlier this year, yeah. And, I, I mean, I was at a hotel, and I walked all over Toronto, and it was like 
videos I've seen out of Pakistan, man, and it was people just squatting and crapping on the ground and just running around and women with full burqas on. And here's the deal. I've been all over the country, okay? I've, I mean, it's suddenly everywhere I go, Dallas, L.A., New York, it is just Muslims in full garb all over. If they admit they brought five million into Europe until uh, I mean, they denied it until about a year ago, now it's five million in the last three years, probably higher. They they said it was two hundred thousand up until that point. They they follow metrics. Uh, you know their their deception designs are out of playbooks. They they cook up. If they said two hundred thousand was the number, it was really five million. They claim it's you know maybe a hundred thousand total now. Here it's probably a million, two million, three million. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But the numbers are gigantic. And when they start carrying out their sleeper cell attacks, the families roll, oh, we didn't know, but don't be political about it. Oh, we didn't know this was happening. Oh, the brother-in-law runs shipping the people in. Oh, my gosh, and hates Donald Trump. Isn't that just special? <sighs> all right, I got to stop right here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we all need to get healthy and get focused and get prepared for what's going on. And patriots need to understand that we need to support liberty-based media that is raising the alarm about what's happening. I want to thank you all for your support. We have reporters in Germany and reporters uh, in Florida right now and reporters uh, out in, on the West Coast. I mean, we are fully deployed. We need more crew, five, six, seven more people, a couple more reporters, editors, uh, camera people, uh, writers. We need, we need more people. We, we, it's a job we got to do. And so we may be able to do that if folks keep buying the X2, the lung cleanse, the Hillary for prison shirts. I need everybody to go to InfoWarsStore.com. We got the best shortwave radios. We got the best solar systems. We've got the best, basically, of everything. And Living Defense, we got a few thousand bottles of this in the first run last year. But because it has 27 ingredients, it detoxifies. It gets rid of parasites, harmful organism, plants, 120 capsules. It sold out. It got five-star reviews. It sold out in two days. So I said, well, let's order triple that amount. You know, that won't sell for a month or so. <sighs> At current sales, because I'm doing 25% off, it's going to be sold out by tomorrow. Okay, so I'm probably going to stop selling it uh, this evening at the discount and hold back some so at least we have some available at full price for a few weeks. What's wrong with that to help fund the operation? But I'm going to keep the sale going at least through tonight. It could sell out tonight. It could sell out tomorrow. I'm going to try to hold back 500 bottles or so for folks that are signed up for auto ship. You get 10% off when you're signed up for auto ship. You get uh, free shipping on orders of $50 or more. Uh, and again, this, this uh, Living Defense is discounted uh, right now, it's $34.95, normally $44.95. And you can go read the reviews right there on the site, the five-star reviews. But this is, it is, this is seen as safe. Consult your physician. It's got a lot of concentrated herbs and things that are known for thousands of years to flush bad organisms. It's a really powerful formula. It's a lot of other similar formulas are up to $100. And it's very hard to make this because we want to pass everything at California standards which are basically made to be able to sue the supplement companies and shut them down. They're almost impossible to, to get to that level. But we neurotically did it. We tested it. It's, it's at the highest standard of cleanliness and, and, and being organic and having non-detectable levels of all this garbage that's out there. So it's really clean. InfoWars Life Living Defense. InfoWarsLife.com. If you want it, you want to support the broadcast, want to try it out, you take a couple pills a day for the 60 days. That's the life cycle of most parasites with their eggs. And it will... Uh, really flush you out. That's certainly what I did for myself and others. InfoWarsLife.com. I've said it so many hundreds of times that I haven't even told my crew to go get the four or five Tim Kennedy interviews, the four or five Colonel Schaefer interviews, uh, all the other interviews with experts, myself, the interview with Bracken, the two interviews with Bracken is coming up in the next hour. I'm not even going to get the dozens and dozens and dozens of recent clips the last two weeks where we said more sleeper cell attacks are imminent Many of the people in Homeland Security that are Islamic, so they can, quote, communicate with the Muslims, are the managers who are actually bringing in the terror cells. ISIS bragged about that two years ago. In 2014, we will do a giant migrant wave. We will invade you. We will kill you. We will get you. We will attack Florida. They said that last Monday. So, red alert, ISIS now activating terror cells. Orlando attack is phase one. And then I talked to our Pentagon sources, and they said absolutely six cities are on the hit list. Obviously, New York, L.A., San Francisco, Miami, Boston, and Orlando is still a top target. Uh, let me just break something here. 
Do the Patriots in the military and in Homeland Security and the FBI know that there are other cells in Orlando? Absolutely. And I'm not saying something that the terrorists don't already know. But here's the bottom line. The White House opened it up and let these people in. And I just talked to Joseph Farah via email earlier. They have another article. DHS agent Obama erased my intel, then scolded me. That ties into the story that's on DrudgeReport.com. Hillary's State Department blocked investigation into Orlando Killer's mosque. And the imam saying, kill the gays. The imam saying, kill the gays. Go out and kill them. So it's time for a jihad. You pledge allegiance to ISIS. And the number one group that needs to be killed is the homosexuals. And they're too busy telling me, use the word gay, not homosexual. They don't care if they get killed. They just want me to use the language they want because you want to run my life. You know what? If you want to sit there and not have guns and get killed for your sexual preference, that's your problem. You want to sit there and point your finger at your fellow Americans and obsess and say, we hate you and we don't hate you, and follow what Hillary Clinton has to say, that's your problem. I'm done. I'm done. And I'm not going to sit here where everywhere I go around Austin, there are women in burkas and not raise the alarm. But I am blown away by the Orlando killer work for a company transporting illegal immigrants inside the U.S. Our government is doing this. Our government is evil. It's overtaken. You can ask, why is Obama doing this? It's clear. They're going to allow more jihad attacks and declare civil emergency. Will he do it before the election? They might be. We're going to talk to former Navy SEAL and a guy that's been really accurately predicting this. He's a humble guy, but a lot of people in D.C. who are patriots, they say, get Bracken on. He knows what's going on. So that's why we have Bracken on, he's a smart guy. But we had Tim Kennedy on yesterday, and it's no secret, they know, that's why he's targeted. It was in Army Times last year, but he's in, been in the Delta Force and been in Special Forces 15 years. That's why ISIS says they want to come to Austin and kill Tim Kennedy. But he knows they're not coming after him because they're cowards. They're going to hit a victim disarmament zone like they did Saturday night. Oh, he was feeling good, feeling right. It was Saturday night. But he wasn't going after four young Chiquitas in Omaha. He was going to kill a bunch of people he knew wouldn't be armed because they were liberals. And it's their religion not to be armed as liberals. It's going to cost you something then. Let's go out to break with Hillary saying she's coming after the guns. Here she is. In your estimation, what law There's would have brother. made this situation not brother. He's a filth. What could have made this not a situation where this man was able to get weapons? Well, first of all, uh, Florida doesn't regulate assault weapons or 50 caliber, caliber rifles. Sit pause. I went to that lake. I'm uh, uh, late. I'm going to go to break and come back. She makes me so mad, her and her voice. God, if she becomes president, please help me. Please help me, God. We're going to go to break. 50 caliber rifles have never committed one crime in this country but an armored car robbery. One. Okay. And when she says she wants to get the semi-auto, she means all multi-shot firearms. I mean, she goes on to say she's coming after our guns, and the federal court just ruled they can you know, try to restrict our guns. They're coming. They bring in the threat. She's the culprit. She's the kingpin. She's one of the commanders of ISIS. We are back live. I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're now into the second hour. We've seen the biggest mass murder attack using a firearm in U.S. history, 49 dead. Uh, they revised the number down from 53, thank God. Uh, but more than 60 wounded, many fighting for their lives. And a victim disarmament uh, temple, a, a temple of living in la-la land, a temple of being abused by the government, a temple of the government injecting gay men in New York in 1978 and 79. Uh, this has been declassified with HIV and the hepatitis vaccine. Uh, a temple of trusting a system that absolutely hates your guts a temple of uh, not allowing any firearms so that a security guard assigned to Homeland Security who goes to a local mosque that says kill the gays uh, could come in and kill 49 people. And Hillary Clinton can launch the whole Arab Spring Jihad, brag about what she did, overthrow all of our allies in places like Egypt, engage in mass murder, and then sit up there and blame the Second Amendment. Meanwhile, this is up on InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. Easiest place to find it is DrudgeReport.com. It's on the left-hand side, second story down. Hillary State Department blocked investigation into Orlando Killer's Mosque, just like they did in San Bernardino with the Justice Department. They had a civil rights investigation. They were told, don't do it. 
the Fort Pierce Islamic Center, where Mateen worships several times a week, was under investigation by both the FBI and DHS as early as 2011 for ties to worldwide Islamic movement known as Tablighi Jamal, which was linked to several terrorist organizations. But the investigation was shut down under pressure from the Clinton-ran State Department and DHS Civil Rights and Civil Liberties Office out of fear of offending Muslims. According to recently retired DHS agent Philip Haney, the FBI has opened cases twice on him, and yet they found no evidence to charge him. It means they didn't go through the same basic analytical process that I went through over a three- to four-hour period, which I was able to link the mosque to the previous cases, he told Roland Daly on Sunday. And we're getting him on the broadcast, if not tomorrow, the next day. And that ties into this article, DHS agent Obama erased my intel, then scolded me. So that is happening. And yeah, just talked to Farah about 30 minutes ago. We're going to get all that set up. Um, let's, let's go out to break. I'm trying to just shut up, and, and I'm not going to talk over because it, it makes me so mad. Blaming 50 cows, using one crime in U.S. history, blaming semi-auto. This guy got it all legally, worked under DHS. I mean, it's just, how about we just make all the DHS jobs the Muslims, and then they can just kill us more orderly. Here it is. I believe strongly that common sense gun safety reform across our country would make a difference. We know the gunmen used a weapon of war to shoot down, you know, at least 50 innocent Americans. You know, we won't even uh, be able to get the Congress to prevent terrorists or people on the no-fly list from buying guns. All right, we'll be back. We'll be back. If you just joined us, we have seen, obviously, the biggest mass murder in U.S. history using a firearm. Technically, you could argue things like wounded knee were worse. And we've been telling you it's coming. I had Tim Kennedy, 15 years, Special Forces. They always say on his UFC profile, former Special Forces. No, he's current Special Forces. And he was here breaking down and confirming the information I got from a Pentagon source higher than him that there are six cities they're planning to hit in the month of Ramadan that just started a few days ago. And obviously it's Orlando again, it's Miami, it's Boston, it's New York, uh, it is uh, San Francisco, L.A. Boston, they're not sure. And believe me, you, you better know there are Army teams and others right now hunting cells down as we speak. Now, here's the schizophrenia of this whole thing. We have articles, stacks of them here, with DHS whistleblowers, FBI agents, Secret Service, you name it. One of our stories is on DrudgeReport.com right now. Hillary State Department blocked investigation into Orlando Killer's Mosque. The imam that's on TV there in Orlando gets up on television and says, kill homosexuals, do them a favor, have compassion when you kill them. We played the clip twice last hour. There's the headline. The, the exact quote is, gays must die, says Muslim in Orlando Mosque. Be compassionate and kill them. And he's so creepy. How do the liberals respond? They blame veterans and conservatives, libertarians and gun owners. And Hillary, I just played it, says we need to go after semi-automatics, 50 cals, never been used in a crime except one armored car robbery. We need to blame the American people and disarm. Now, I'm not going to go back and pull up my two interviews. And he's also been on the nightly news. It's three interviews with Mr. Bracken. I'm not going to do that. Anybody that listens knows that he came on and said he believes before the election you will start seeing attacks. And he says specifically nightclubs. Because that's where you have disarmed people, no guns allowed. This guy was a security guard with a gun license subcontracting for DHS with his brother-in-law running a major operation with Obama, bringing in the, quote, refugees. That's why Homeland Security twice ordered the FBI not to even talk to the terrorist, Matin. This is Obama bringing in sleeper cells. This is Merkel and Halan and all of them in a coordinated event it's in the news. They, they land with these jets and don't even check their IDs. 80% military-age men. They bring in 0.7% Christians, even though Syria is 20% Christian or more. 
And Obama gets up and makes jokes and goes, we got to be fair. We can't just bring in Christians. That's because he is anti-Christian. And I used to hear this eight years ago and roll my eyes. I just thought he was some CIA double, and it was meant to con the Muslims. And they were playing some, you know, divide and conquer, clash of civilizations. I never in my wildest dreams thought that the socialist elite would actually ally with Islam for real. But you know what? They're doing it. I mean, I always knew there was criminal elements working with radical Islam. But my God, they've joined it. Obama wears that ring. He, he, he's got all those charms in his pocket. He, he speaks Arabic better, they say, than top imams. He grew up in a mosque in Indonesia. He really does want to mount America's head on the wall. He really is a sleeper cell. And you've got Hillary Clinton with Benghazi taking out the ambassadors. They could ship the weapons in. We had all the whistleblowers on at the time. Had Cy Hirsch, Pulitzer Prize winner, on a few months ago. He came on and said, yes, you've done a great investigation. Yes, this is all accurate. The Pentagon, four years ago, started refusing to go along with Obama's plan to aid al-Qaeda. So Obama changed the name to ISIS. So this isn't a coup against Obama. It's a counter coup to the globalist allied with Islam with a war going on inside the intelligence agencies and the military where they're being ordered to stand down. and not go after these sleeper cells that are directly working for DHS. I remember the headlines, even in the Times of London back off, it was FBI agents saying, it's like they had Al-Qaeda above us. They knew every move we were making before we got orders. So here to try to break this down, he'll be with us 30 minutes the next hour, but he's going to be as a, here as a pundit, a guest. We're going to go back and forth, play a lot of clips, also take some of your calls, uh, is Matt Bracken of EnemiesForeignAndDomestic.com, who basically was here with us just a few months ago saying a month and a half ago this is imminent this is coming down this is happening he's an author former navy seal i'm highly recommended from Stuart rose a lot of the great patriots and some folks i know at the pentagon that say you know this guy's dead on have him on because they're going to tell you classified stuff they just go here this guy has uh, knows exactly what's going on talk to him or hey is is this accurate these six cities i was told about you know talking to a delta force person and they go well yeah and they believe that the attacks are not coordinated, but it's like fire ants that go up your leg. They release a pheromone, and then simultaneously, they all start stinging once that one leader gives out the pheromone. So as these attacks happen, they're probing, they're seeing the resolve, they're testing, and the fact that they just keep bringing more refugees in as these attacks happen is emboldening it. So we're going to talk to Matt Bracken. Joe Biggs is on the ground. He'll be co-hosting with us coming up at the start of the next hour as well. Leanne McAdoo is hopping mad. Uh, she wants to come in the studio, one of our reporters. It's all over the news, folks. Here in this audience, we know what happened. It's totally clear. More Islamic attack, part of a larger jihad. The Tet too that was predicted by our guest just a month ago here on air. In fact, look up Bra Bracken's last visit. I want to give the actual, I think it was a month ago. But in mainstream media, it is, oh my gosh, homophobia. Oh, this is just like conservatives, the attack on poor gays. We need hate crime laws to restrict free speech. We need to ban semi-autos and 50 cows. Rainbow flags everywhere. Nothing about this guy's imam saying go out and kill gays. Nothing about his brother-in-law being a major runner with DHS of these people in. I mean, this is infiltration. There it is, April 27, 2016. Navy SEAL massive collapse inevitable. Yeah, that was the first interview. It's the second interview. It was about a week later, and it was uh, the uh, headline was on sleeper cells and Tet too. The point is, you can read his articles from years ago, and you can go see just two weeks ago. Special Forces top Special Forces soldier says ISIS cells now in the U.S. attacks imminent. That was two weeks ago. Tim Kennedy, right here, sitting right here. So, this is all going on right now. We've got Army veteran uh, Joe Biggs there on the ground right now. He'll be joining us. But this is just the incredible nature of what we face. Orlando Killer worked for a company transporting illegal immigrants inside the U.S. was interviewed by FBI three times. The president has ordered outside of law these private groups to be set up to bring in Chinese, Mexicans, Eastern Europeans, Muslims, Arabs. It just It's massive. Brother-in-law of nightclub killer hates Trump, works with refugees. Trump better talk about this in his speech today. And, I, and I've been talking to Stone. We're trying to get all this to Trump. U.S. probing whether anyone helped Gummin in Orlando. Oh, think so? Go to his mosque. Reuters. Imam speaking in Orlando says gays must be killed out of compassion. 
Omar Mateen, terrorist, was 29-year-old Islamic radical. Orlando killer worked for company transporting. Again, this is what's going on. And, and ISIS re claimed responsibility within hours, and I couldn't find it for seven, eight hours, them even admitting it yesterday. Or even saying he was a Muslim. He pledged allegiance in the 911 call to ISIS. He said, I did this for ISIS. And he was cold and calm, stalling the negotiators outside while he shot more people. I'm going to tell you this. If I'm being held hostage or anybody else, I want the police to storm immediately. I don't want you to sit there on the phone thinking he's going to stop while he's capping people, taking his time. Storm him, kill him. Just like they did with the tower shooter. And yeah, folks, I've had somebody in Dallas repeatedly twice pull guns on me. I took the guns away from them. I'm not claiming I'm the toughest guy in the world, but we need the police default to storm. Now, I'm not a former guy trained in anti-terrorism like our next guest, but that's what needs to be done. When they do storm it quicker, there's a lot less deaths. That's what the Russians do. But now going to our guest, I appreciate uh, you coming on, sir. Good to have you with us. Uh, of course, the website for folks that want to visit it uh, is enemiesfarinandomestic.com. I'm going to skip this one break because uh, we got to make some sacrifices around here to be able to cover all this. Uh, this is so insane. I want to get into what happened, the details, your prediction, unfortunately, coming true, your next predictions. Um, Tim Kennedy said the intel is they're going to double the attacks every year. That's the, the uncoordinated plan, but that's the metric. So I want to talk about that with you. Do you agree with that? Uh, but overall, in general, what is the motive? Do you disagree with what I'm saying by Obama and the concerted left worldwide allied with radical Islam? How it, it, It's quite a trick to get their super liberal constituency to blame conservatives and veterans and patriots and libertarians and survivalists when we're the people that are right warning them and they're in love with radical Islam. I mean, is, is this just a form of bondage? Is it a form of, of cuckolding? What is happening here? Is, is it Stockholm uh, syndrome, Mr. Bracken? I found, a, I found a terrific quote recently by, of all people, going into the Wayback Machine, Ilyas Ramirez Sanchez, a.k.a. Carlos the Jackal. Now, he's in, in uh, prison in France for life. I mean, you, gotta be do, you have to do some pretty bad things in France to get life in prison like murder a bunch of people. Back in the 70s, the PLO was allied with the German uh, um, Bader Meinhof and Red Brigades. So it was sort of like a left and Islam coalition, which seemed to have gone away. But Carlos the Jackal wrote a foreword to an Islamist book recently from prison. Of course, they let him do that. You know, they, he's got like a suite in prison. And it says that only a coalition of Islamist and socialist forces can defeat the United States. And in the Obama administration, we get a twofer. We've got them both covered, raised by Frank Marshall Davis in Hawaii, the communist, uh, and then trained in madrasa schools. So we've got both of them in one, folded together in one. Um, after the Benghazi attack, there were hearings the State Department, a State Department official came out with a quote that should be in everybody's mind, the Taliban is inside the building. He was referring to Huma Abedin, Valerie Jarrett, and others who are allied closely with the Muslim Brotherhood. When Obama came in, he had all of the uh, law enforcement and intelligence agency doctrines and, and training methods purged of any mention of Islamic Jihad. Imagine trying to fight World War II but you were not allowed to say Nazi, SS, Gestapo, or Hitler because it would offend all the decent moderate Germans. That's how crazy it is today. It's completely out of control. It's insane. It is an infiltration process. It's not something that's theoretical. It's very well known that the second generation of immigrants are often more radical than their parents. Often the, the sons go to the mosque and they're taught that they're their parents backers and backsliders, and if they want to, you know, return to the true faith, they have to become jihadists. So I don't care if this guy, Mateen, was born in the United States to Afghan radicals. He's even more radical. And when I watch television, I was watching MSNBC last night. They were interviewing the imam from the guy's uh, Fort Pierce mosque, and the MSNBC interviewer was looking at him like he was looking at... Uh, you know, Reverend Jones or uh, Father Flannery or, you know, Rabbi Schwartz. Like, oh, really? When the guy's saying, oh, it's a sin to lie, that's a lie. In Islam, it's not a sin to lie. 
to an infidel. Anything that you do to help the spread of Islam is good, halal. Anything you do against Islam is forbidden, haram. Truth and lie has nothing to do with it. So these people can look right in our face and say, I am a moderate Muslim. I am against Sharia. Well, you don't know if that's true or not. But if they're wearing the Abe Lincoln chin beard and they've got a Mohammed you know, a skull cap on and they're wearing traditional garb and their wife's wearing a hijab or a burqa, they believe in Sharia. They believe the whole package. But, and, I, and I'd like to say a lot more about that, but I'm re I really want to go to this attack in Orlando because a lot of things don't add up and don't make sense to me. There are some things that I'm, I'm waiting for these brainiacs on the mainstream media to ask a few questions. They're starting to ask, why did it take three hours when after Columbine, the policy became to init the first responders just go in and disrupt so, it? So I'm right when I say, I mean, storm immediately. Absolutely. There's a hero, an American hero. There should be statues of this guy. And I'm ashamed because I didn't, I forgot to write down the notes. I believe his name was something like Luke Woodley, but this is in Oregon, like in the 80s or early 90s. A, a nut came into his high school, a student with a, a semi-automatic 22, you know, with an extended clip uh, on a Ruger uh, uh, 1022, and he started shooting up the cafeteria. And the hero, I believe his name is Luke, and I hope I'm not naming the wrong guy, but the hero charged the guy when he was reloading, when he was switching mags, and he took bullets. He was going to go to college like on a wrestling scholarship. It wrecked his life, but he saved many lives. And that's what you have to do, whether you're in church or a nightclub. Personally, I don't go to killing zones like that. Uh, you know, no exit nightclubs. It could be a fire like the White Snake uh, concert or a stampede yeah, like a concert. Yeah, Great White, Great White. Great White. I just don't like going to these places where you're basically at the mercy of a herd instinct that can get, you know, like a buffalo stampede off a cliff. Um, personally, I don't like that. Now, if, even if I'm in church, though, I'm looking around, I do consider myself the sheepdog, even though I've been out of the military for decades and decades, I do consider myself the sheepdog. And I don't expect everybody else to, you well, know. Sure, what do you make the of the, I mean, and I saw the Attorney General and others congratulating themselves for, for what they did. And, and I guess that is the big scandal I haven't talked enough about. Three hours? But, and what about the security guard? That nightclub, the Pulse Club, needs to get their money back from that off-duty police officer. Now, I haven't heard anything about a dead police officer, but if you're a sheepdog and a wolf with you know bloody fangs runs into your herd of sheep, there should be either a dead wolf or a dead sheepdog. He was there with a gun and a bulletproof vest and a badge. What happened to him? How come we're not interviewing him to find out what happened? Why wasn't he, you know, either, either he's got an empty uh, magazine and he's out of all reloads and he's there on the floor with his, the people he was being paid to protect, I'm sorry, even if I'm at church and I've got nothing on me, you have to charge the guy. You have to. Even if one guy gets up to charge, it'll give courage to the others. Then if the guy's getting bum-rushed from three or four directions, you're going to take him out. The guy in Oregon, and I hope I'm, it might be Washington. Somebody can look it up. I remember the story. It doesn't matter. Everybody knows about it. Keep going. The guy bum-rushed him by himself, took bullets, but he took the guy down. Now, they, they, they're reporting from inside this nightclub that he was changing magazine after magazine after magazine. That's when you have to do it. If you see how tightly the bodies are compressed in there, it would be hard for a hero across the room to do anything, obviously. But still, it's, it's disconcerting that, you know, there, that there was no rush made or maybe it was ineffective. For all we know, there are tons of heroes in there dead um, that did try to do it. So I don't want to say anything notice about that. they always try to target liberal areas where people are disarmed because they know there's a tendency not to fight back. Yeah, they're not going to do it at an NRA convention, I guarantee you. But, um, yeah, or, or a uh, gun show or, well, or you know, a, a NASCAR, uh, you know, car rally. It's not going to, you, know, you know, a custom car rally. It, it's not going to happen there because everybody's packing, for it's sure. not going to happen on a motorcycle rally. Now, but I want to come I, back from like, break and get into the geopolitical issues here, but you predicted an increase in these attacks. You called it Tet 2. Let's talk about your predictions now. Yeah, I, 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 are we going to break now? Or? In a few minutes, but let's start talking about uh, predictions now. Yeah, the, it's the, the pheromone, the, the insect communication pheromone uh, analogy is perfect. And what they're hoping is that each 
each uh, my, uh, my team is going to spur more of these uh, um, radical Islamist uh, nutcases to go off. I'm not I'm not as sure as you are that there are active cells, uh, you know, the, like the so-called you know card-carrying ISIS members. It do, there doesn't need to be. This is much more like a swarm of jellyfish or stinging insects that are communicating by the chemical pheromone. So as you know, success breeds success um, in in their ideology. So I would expect to see uh, you know more of these because they're it, it works. And and also as far as the guns go, it's important to keep in mind this is not the worst mass murder at a nightclub. It's the worst mass shooting at a nightclub. The worst mass murder happened in the Bronx in 1990 when a guy got thrown out of the Happy Land Social Club um, nightclub, you know, an unlicensed nightclub, so it didn't have like good fire escapes, things like that. He came back with a little like a, a two gallon can, a jug of gasoline, spread it around the front entrance, lit it up, and 87 people were burned to death. Now, if Martin, he's a security guard, so he's thinking guns, but if he just smashed into the front, you know, with a, a barrel of gasoline on the front of a truck, he would have killed all 300 people inside. No Absolutely. question. Absolutely. And, and that's something the globalists should know. If they think they're just going to take our guns and then have some war against the American people and win, all the real that's fighters in this country know that a car or gasoline or just all these other weapons are more powerful, uh, you know, going up against large groups of people than firearms. So, you yes. know, Hillary, Hillary and all these Clinton, people need to understand that. If Hillary Clinton wants to start a second civil war, all she needs to do is move to take away our Second Amendment rights. Because when they come to take away your Second Amendment rights, that's when you use them. There's a great quote by Solzhenitsyn about how they burned when they were in the gulag camps later, because they just let these KGB or uh, MVD, whatever they were called at the time, GRU, they just let them come up into their high-rise apartments, grab people out of an apartment, haul them off. They didn't attack their their uh, paddy wagon, their Black Maria paddy wagons. They didn't attack the KGB guys in the stairwells with axes if they had to. There are not enough federal law enforcement agents to even make a dent. Any federal law enforcement agents, as I like to say, the boys and girls down in the fusion centers who are watching me right now, you have got to make a decision because if you go with team tyranny, and you and you in any way go out for gun confiscation against American citizens, you are a domestic enemy of the of the Constitution, and we will shoot you right back. Well, I'll say this: they have openly sided with the globalists, who've sided with radical Islam. This is there should be no debating the fact that this country has been hijacked, and 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 we have occupiers just like Vichy French in control. Stay with us. This is teleprompter free. Four hours of radio slash television every day. InfoWars Nightly News comes back at 7 o'clock Central every evening. And I tell you, I'm not up here trying to be shocking. I'm not up here trying to be sensational. Reality is so much crazier than fiction. We're going to go back to our guests in a moment. It's so profound that the exact same plan in Europe and here in the U.S. is being carried out where our governments and the socialist left, backed by all these big trillion-dollar companies, are getting rid of the borders, advertising to bring in the most radical Muslims you can, allowing them to attack, and then declaring civil emergency in Europe and arresting people by the thousands that even try to march or criticize what's happening or hand out flyers. I've had reporters in Germany for a week and a half. They're still there. They're at migrant camps right now. Following those reports. And... The German police, everybody just run over. The security guards threaten them when they just try to videotape the refugee center. Uh, there's an arrogance at the train station, you know, by the Muslims, everybody, they're just used to everybody bowing down. How they got Europeans to be so cowardly and pathetic is I guess they arrest you. They arrested Marie Le Pen for saying France faces the biggest threat to its survival since the Nazi invasion. And, and, of course, it was the Vichy French, for those that don't know the history of it. Most of the general staff have been paid off by the Nazis. They didn't like the government they already had. And the French stood down. And the British Expeditionary Force had to basically get pushed to the sea at Dunkirk. 
and they had a secret treaty with the British. The Nazis did. That's why they stopped the bombing of a lot of the ships as they tried to get away. But that's all lost in the you know, fog of history. Obviously, the British then broke that treaty, as the Germans had pretty much broken it. Uh, and the deputy Fuhrer, Rudolf Hess, flew into England and parachuted in with the treaty and the rest of them. They locked him up in the tower. But I'm digressing. The Vichy French, for me, are the biggest example of globalism. Because people think so much of warfare is armies lining up and countries battling each other. But so much of it is infiltrating the other governments and paying people off. Like most of the Iraqi government and, and military was paid off pre-1991, during Desert Shield. Because the CIA had put Saddam and a lot of those guys in power, so they had infiltrators all over the place. And they were telling people, hey, there's $20 million in your Swiss bank account, General. All you got to do is once that night happens is get out of there and get to this point, we'll have a helicopter land and get you. And they did do that. They're going to be retiring in Switzerland. And the general will be like, but what do I do? My family, have your kids there, have your wife there. Just don't bring too much stuff. Well, that's the same thing went on with France. That's what globalism is. They come and they take over your government. They come and they take over uh, your institutions. And then it's a soft coup. They're there. And then they open the borders up and start bringing in all these jihadis. I just don't see why if the globalists already had control of the U.S. and Europe, why they would do something this insane. And it's because they literally hate the West. Obama and Hollande and all these people really want to see it gone. And you want to do that, you bring in 10% of the population Muslim, it's over. It is game over. Your society will be wrecked and dysfunctional forever. So we're going to go to our guest here in a moment and ask what he thinks from his Navy SEAL background, his research background predicting this so accurately, what's coming next. And then we're going to open the phones up specifically on the shootings, on anomalies, on things you saw, on where you think this is going. Uh, what are the next targets? 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. All I ask is you have a good phone and that you'd be right to the point. Uh, finally, I I'm not going to belabor this. Uh, we have a great crew, but we've had some folks on vacation and we've had some people out of town uh, working on some uh, TV deals we've got coming up. So I don't normally say we're going to have a special and then, you know, extend it a week or two. This literally fell through the cracks because the ads are still running. Even though I'm not supposed to be offering at this, it has to end today. It will end today. I called folks in and I said, why is this still airing? I said I'd run it for one more week when you didn't take it out last week. I mean, literally. Uh, so the Alexa Pure Breeze is an amazing four-stage air filtration system. It gets out 99.99% of everything in a room of 800 square feet. Uh, it is only $249 regularly, but it's $184 introductory. And it's a just super ergonomic, modern space age design, four different filter technologies with the ion clusters, the first layer. It, it runs almost silent, and, and comparable units are $400, $500, in some cases $1,000. So at $249, it's a steal, and the profit we make funds the operation, but I like super sales, so you cannot find this deal anywhere. In fact, they premiered it here. It's the folks that make the Alexa Pure water filtration systems as well. You get 10% off of that promo code WATER at checkout. But the Alexa Pure Breeze, this is the last day. <laughs> or, I mean, I, I never have a sale falls to the cracks like this. I keep saying, this sale will end now. I said, fine. The guy that runs this is out of town for a week. We'll end it on Monday. Well, Monday's here. It's still up. Uh, so this is your last chance to save 26% total on something that's already the best deal out there, in my view, and is really amazing. And then I've purchased four of them for my home uh, personally because there's so much in the air. And then finally, speaking of cleansing your body, Living Defense is 27 concentrated herbs like wildcrafted black walnut, green hole. It goes on and on, wildcrafted uh, wormwood. This is, a lot of this is multi-thousand-year-old stuff that kicks out parasites and garbage in your body from bad bacteria to worms, you name it. Most, you know, the medical science doesn't want you to even think about this or deal with this, but 90% of the world has parasites. They want you to just get sick and then have to go to them, in my view. Well, Living Defense, we only had one run of it, one run of it, and it sold out in two days because I guess it's just such a good deal, and, and, and all the nutraceutical experts out there flipped out over it. So I ordered triple the order. Well, then it took six months to get more of all the herbs in because we want to pass California standards. It's really hard to get 27 ingredients and have them pass California standards. That's nearly impossible. They wrote it to make it almost impossible. Well, we've done it, and I thought we'd have a month's supply. It's going to be sold out by tomorrow if I keep discounting it, 25% out of the gates. I'm getting rid of the discount tonight at midnight. It's programmed into the shopping cart. 
and then we'll hopefully have a few thousand bottles that last until more comes in with it being ten dollars more but i sincerely doubt that and sign up for auto ship and get 10 percent off all the other discounts that are already there and free shipping on any order of $50 or more at InfoWarsStore.com. That's the big umbrella site. InfoWarsLife.com takes you directly to the nutraceutical area. And we also have the whole longevity line. When you buy it at InfoWarsHealth.com, you get the biggest discounts as well on that whole family of products. Uh, and a small portion of the profit goes to help fund this operation as well. And believe me, this is a standalone operation funded by selling products. Um, not so much off sponsorship. Talk radio is collapsing. We're expanding in the face of a depression, not just in media, but in culture in general and in the economy because we have to. Believe me, I don't want to risk everything and put on all sale and dump everything into and just just max everything out. But I am. I'm, I'm actually hiring more camera people, editors, stuff like that, even though in the future we may not be able to keep them. Uh, we're going to go back to our guest now. It's just that it's very important you spread the word about the broadcast. The system is doing everything it can to censor people, to shut down this type of speech. They've pulled out the stops to try to buy off talk radio locally and kick people off affiliates. Big money's getting spent to do that. I mean, there is a lot of ominous stuff going on. And so it's very important, whether it's this show or others, don't take stories and news articles and information for granted. Don't take the news up on drudgereport.com for granted where he's breaking the electronic Berlin Wall. They don't want you to know Hillary ordered the stand down when she was still at the State Department on an investigation of this mosque or that Obama ordered one two years ago and had a criminal investigation of FBI agents in San Bernardino. That's in this article, with the proof, with the whistleblowers. Okay? And World Net Daily broke this yesterday. It didn't get any attention. We expanded the article, Drudge linked to it. The point is, is that this is a serious battle. Now, I want to go to our guest. Uh, again, the website is enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Matt Bracken, former Navy SEAL author, uh, who has really predicted this Tet 2 Islamic rollout so I want to go through some questions for you and then go through some of these clips and talk about the cowardice of some folks. We have a clip of a guy who went on the news and talked about how he survived, how he blocked the door so other people couldn't get out so the, so the shooter couldn't get him. Uh, and, I mean, this really is a liberal for you. I mean, I've got to tell you, they are some nasty people on average. They have major studies out that they're six times more likely. This is government studies in England and Canada to not give money, to claim they give to charity. They are six times more likely to steal they are many times more likely not to render aid because they're not real liberals, folks. They're fake, monstrous people. But but I'm digressing. Matt Bracken, going back to the $64 trillion question, the sensationalism of the fact that o Obama addresses Islamists in Cairo in his first major speech, they said it was better than their top imams, goes to the, to the madrasas. His father, I believe, was Frank Marshall Davis, a communist, and he, he admittedly stayed his summers with him, so his grandpa's best friend, the communist pornographer, uh, he seems to, you know, hate the West. He, 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 I mean, who is this guy? What is the end game? This weird alliance between the left and Islam. Where is it going? What do you expect to happen? What do you think of my parallel to the Vichy French? Well, I think that it's apt. And I think that the EU, you can just draw a line right through this, this entire century, at least going back to this Calgary plan. Uh, this fellow that was, you know, preaching the abolition of na nationalities step by step, starting with the uh, European Union, um, they have to destroy the nation state. There can't be Austrians that are proud to be Austrians. Their goal is to wreck Germany, wreck Austria, wreck France. That's why one of the most important things probably in the last generation that's happened in Europe is this referendum next week in, in England, the Brexit. If Brexit happens, the EU is probably dead. So this is an existential moment for the monsters in Brussels, like uh, President Junkers. These are dictators. The, the European Parliament is nothing. It's just a, a rubber stamp for secret councils that make the laws that Europeans have to, to live by. But I was watching a lot of the Bilderberg coverage. The, your affiliated reporter, Paul Joseph Watson, is... Uh, is amazing. I, I, anybody should go back and watch any of his YouTube videos. He's brilliant. He was on the scene there. Now, I'm going to tie Bilderberg to what we're talking about in Orlando directly. General Petraeus is one of the sellouts, the lackeys, the stooges that was invited to come over and lick the hands of the super elites at Bilderberg. Now he's joining up forces with other gun controllers. There he is. He's joining up with the other gun controllers to disarm us. This traitor, General Petraeus, this traitor, this enemy of the Constitution, General Petraeus, I want to say something to you and people like you. 
You took an oath to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, First Amendment, Second Amendment, all of the amendments. And you are working for the Saudis now, indirectly, through this global hedge fund, KKR, where you're making millions of dollars on commissions, and you're getting paid for doing work like your Washington Post article about why we shouldn't insult Islam, because it makes it, them upset, and they might attack us. He's preaching surrender to Sharia law because he's making millions of dollars. In what universe is that not treason? He might be, he might be a retired general, and he might be a retired CIA director, but in my book, this it is, is look, look, when foreign powers start buying off people of influence, it's called espionage. It's called infiltration. We used to execute people if, if they did that with the Russians. And, and, and that's what's crazy about this. For folks that don't know, it got overshadowed. They shot it Saturday live. Uh, Sunday, uh, it, I mean, it was going viral. But then, of course, the, you know, the sad shooting. And, and to understand the video, General Petraeus is walking out. He's not even running yet. And, 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 and Germans start talking to him that are aware of who he is in Bilderberg. So he runs from them and literally runs so that he won't be identified inside this meeting that violates the Logan Act. And so this is purely, purely disgusting. And, and the word is, Petraeus wasn't going along with the globalist and was an attempt to bring balance between the Army and the CIA. But when, he, when they were able to get him with the secret files at his house, he basically rolled over to him so, so, so that they wouldn't give him prison time. But the it treason, doesn't matter. I mean, it's so disgusting to see him under their control. So, the treason is so wound through this administration, the high-ranking high parts of this government. You've, you know about Philip Haney. He has a book out called, called um, uh, See Something, Say Nothing. There's another book, very important, by a former... A uh, subject matter expert on Islamic Jihad named Stephen Coughlin called Catastrophic Failure, Blindfolding America in the Face of Jihad. He was the go-to man on Islamic Jihad until the Obama administration. He had a brief which was named by the people that heard it, the Red Pill Brief, a reference to the Matrix. Because when people listened to Stephen Coughlin's briefs, then they, it, they understood it. When the Fort Hood shooting happened, People said to Stephen Coughlin, did you speak to this guy? Did you collaborate? Because in his, his briefs that he was giving, Major Hassan, the Fort Hood shooter, he was using the same slides you were using. And Stephen Coughlin's reply was, no, these are the key uh, surahs from the Quran. So if he was using them, I was using them because I understand how they think. This is what they're thinking. Well, he was thrown out of being a, a lecturer to the CIA, the Pentagon, the Joint Chiefs, and Obama had the entire American law enforcement and intelligence agencies purged of any mentions of Islamic Jihad. It's incredible. So I want to play the clip do? since you mentioned it. The video is up on Infowars.com. This is uh, uh, Rob Dew chasing Petraeus, and, and this cuts in during the chase. First, they go up and talk to him, and he literally cuts and runs. Here is the former head of the CIA running from reporters in Dresden. One quick question, General Petraeus. You had to resign as a result of an email scandal, yet Hillary Clinton is still running for president, even though she's got this massive email scandal of people hacking her. Do you think she should resign from the Democratic Party? Just one quick question, sir. Now that's from the middle. Here's where he comes out. Germans come over and start talking to him, because we now are aware of what's really going on, general public. And then, boom, he hightails it. We're going to go ahead and keep rolling this up. I'm sorry, go ahead. Is your audio uh, cutting out there, Mr. Bracken? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I, I, I hope that the video that sticks to him like stink on rice is the video of that sniveling coward traitor running away. He is a man that took an oath to defend our Constitution, and he's lining his pockets with millions of dollars of bribes from Saudi Arabia, laundered through a global hedge fund. He has no, he's not, doesn't have any background in finance. It's supposed to be his Rolodex, his connections. Sure, sure, I understand that. Hey, so, so, so breaking this down, he, he's just, he's just emblematic. He's emblematic of this. What do we do? Where does this go? 
What is the Saudi end game? Yes, they bought off our government well, to a great extent. The reason I'm the reason I'm hammering on Petraeus so much is we need to identify traitors, call them out, and hang traitor around their neck. Running away at Bilderberg is brilliant. And thank you, InfoWars, for getting that. Why do you think the wicked flee when none pursue? General. Why do you think the wicked flee when none pursue? Yeah. It's crazy. All right, Mr. Bracken, stay there. He is fired up today, former Navy SEAL, on with us a month ago, predicting that these Tet Offensive style attacks would begin. He'll come back and we'll take some calls from Mark and Marguerite and Diane. Here's the headline. Far from a hero, Orlando attack survivor describes harrowing escape. And who knows it's even true. This guy turns out said one of these little actors. But what trend he isn't trying to be an actor. His anger was consistent. Instead of having their own life, they're actors. Orlando Gunman's ex-co-worker talks to Kelly File. A survivor of last night's shooting in Orlando told the Kelly File described the body and the bloody carnage that unfolded. Louis Burbano. Uh, well, let's actually hear from him himself and then uh, start going to your phone calls with our guest. Here it is. You were holding the doors shut so that the shooter could not get out, but was there any concern that, you know, you might be keeping people fleeing the shooter from getting yeah, out of there? Yeah. Um... Being told what to say. I was on my mind. He's looking uh, on his, there, he's looking his banging, phone. There was pushing up the door. I was on my mind. But at that point in time, I just tried doing what I thought would be best. Talk about a robot head. He's got earphones in. He's reading what someone's telling him to say. This is who America is now, a bunch of zombies. Yeah, these nightclubs are death traps. All right, that's enough of this. Uh, we're going to go to break. This is a short segment. Longer segments are coming up in the next hour. I'm going to go to Chad and Robert and Alex and Marguerite and Diane and others. But going back to our guest, Mr. Bracken, other tidbits you haven't added that you think are important to impart, uh, and, and I want to ask you about his brother-in-law that's a major player with Obama bringing in, quote, refugees, is an anti-Trump guy, uh, and, and, and all the rest of it. I mean, this is really getting crazy. And this, this judge is part of La Raza and part of a boycott of Trump, and, and he comes out and says, you should recuse yourself, and they spend that saying Trump's being racist. I mean, this is just crazy. This is a war for our minds. This is, you know, this is the AJ show. This is a war for your mind. Um, I don't want to come off like I'm only here to attack General Petraeus, but I think it's very important to point out clear traitors that took an oath and defy it. But I also want to uh, throw some support to people that deserve it. We all know about like Pam Geller getting taken off of Facebook, but I mean, I think she can afford security or at least more than the guy I'm about to talk about. There's an American up in Virginia with a counter jihad website. He's another author. He's an old guy. He's even older than me, real old, named Ed Klein with a C. And he's on the ISIS kill list, all right? The FBI visited him and said, hey, buddy, you're on the ISIS kill list. He told his landlord, and his landlord's evicting him. This is like a real financial hardship. What, what an incredible nation of cowards. This, the, yeah. I, I have to say it. We have become He's a moving. spoiled, rotten nation of filth that don't even know the people we inherited this country from. And people well, think it's a virtue to be cowards. He doesn't recognize Virginia anymore. He's moving to Texas where he thinks he has a better shot at, at freedom, at least people that will fight. So they're on the uh, gatesofvienna.org, that's another leading counter-jihad website, Gates of Vienna, as in the uh, defense against Islam in the 1600s. That's when they, well, they uh, put the walls up in Rome, yeah. Yeah, the, 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 uh, there's a... GoFundMe site on uh, Gates of Vienna for Ed Klein. He's trying to uh, get money together in a hurry because he's being evicted because he's on the ISIS kill list. Can you imagine? So um, if people go to Gates of Vienna, they can maybe chuck out. Yeah, we should get Mr. Klein on. on. I, I mean, look, uh, the crazy thing is how the radical Islamists, which is Islam, have gotten the media and everybody to totally come in against American freedom. But in Europe, they're arresting Germans and people by the thousands that just say anything. <laughs> we got video of them ticketing people for handing out flyers. I mean, the left is the most hateful anti-freedom group. They're spinning the killing of these gays and blaming gun owners, folks, and loving their little jihadis. Back in 70 seconds. Well, I was never in the military, but I've sworn a public oath to fight all enemies, foreign and domestic, because I'm an American and my family lives here. My family's been here since the start of this country. And America isn't perfect, but its ideas are the greatest we've ever seen. And there are so many people that simply hate basic liberty and basic freedom, and they've organized a clash of civilizations. I realize a lot of bad things have been done to folks in the Middle East. It's been done to actually help Saudi Arabia take out its enemies like Iraq, Syria, and others. And uh, our government has been bought off by the bad guys. 
I mean, hell, a lot of movies don't get produced or get don't get released because they got to get approved now at the big, big uh, movie houses at, at the big production companies uh, by the communist Chinese. They're censoring more than the uh, than the uh, Muslims. I mean, this is really crazy how we like have no political immune system. Now, I want to start going to some phone calls. This is a short segment, long segment coming up with our guests, and Joe Biggs is going to be popping in as well for the balance uh, of the hour. But we'll all ride shotgun together uh, for a while. Uh, but uh, we've got Mr. Bracken, the former Navy SEAL, uh, here with us as well, and we're going over a lot of other news. But I want to start going to some of your some of your phone calls. Uh, but I think what he was getting at is is really important. People are getting kicked out of their homes if they're on the ISIS hit list. That's thousands and thousands of people. Uh, Tim Kennedy's on the list. Uh, people are losing their jobs. People, the cowards go, oh my gosh, I need to remove support from you and grovel to Islam. Islam went and hit the people. This guy was a Democrat, the shooter. This guy, but, but he went and chose the people he knew were weak where he could kill the most. And I've been told that by the criminologists, the people that study, people that follow Orthodox Islam, and they say that they actually respect people that know what they're doing and know they're lying and know their plan. That they're actually kind of bullied by their own cult. It's the people that grovel to them that they want to kill the most. Uh, have, 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 have you found that, Mr. Bracken? We've lost Either. his audio. Hold on. Go ahead and start over. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, there's an old saying that the um, that the, the Muslims, the Islamists, or whatever you, however you want to put it, depending on the era of, of political correctness, that they're either at your feet or at your throat. They do respect strength. Islam has advanced for 1,400 years. It's often defeated cultures that were smarter, that were braver, that were uh, more technologically advanced, but they learn how to defeat, defeat the weak points, how to break a society, how to use political correctness, whatever era in whatever era, how to divide and conquer. Deception to, and long game. And bribery. They'll use bribery. They'll bribe the, the mayor of the city to open the gates with that. Just as you said in the Iraqi context, you know, there'll be a helicopter waiting and a suitcase full of hundred dollar bills. That's been a, an Islamic technique forever. So when I see these, you know, these Eurocrats like Merkel, who knows what they've been promised? And secular atheists who believe in nothing will have no problem repeating the Shahada, the little ditty about Muhammad, the only messenger. What's the difference? If you don't believe in God, it's just sort of like saying, you know, voodoo, boogoo, boogoo, and I get to live and be rich? Fine. Now, your kids don't know that dad was just a sellout traitor, like some generals. Your kids won't know that because they'll be raised in a madrasa school. They'll be brainwashed, you know, rocking, you know, reciting the Quran. But the traitors, they know it, but they'll do it for the money. And this is a, an, um, an MO that goes back 1,400 years. Well, I tried to stop the, close, the clash of civilization in my own little way. And, uh, you know, now it's on. Now, now it's on. The globalists are flooding us with this. They've got a plan. They mean for us to capitulate, run up white flags when we're having 5, 10, 15 attacks a week. Let me ask you this question. We're going to break and going right to calls. At, at its metric level, doubling each year roughly, how bad will it get with the numbers we're talking about? An attack every day, an attack every week? An attack no, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't look at this in a, in a uh, arithmetic numer you know, type of uh, escalation. I think it's going to go algorithmic because eventually they're going to find some of our weaker spots where massive leverage will happen. For example, that Metcalf uh, grid attack. You do 20 Metcalf station attacks and take our grid down, it's game over. Wow. Yeah, so, so you're talking about them trying to take out the Transformers and, and, and massive power outages. Well, I, they'll just blame gun owners if it happens. I mean, you know, that's all the left cares about. It's mounting our head. Look, I know what's going on. The global social engineers need to destabilize the West to bring it down to end nation states. That's what our guest concurred earlier. And they think they're going to be able to manage Islam and make us conform to it and then use that to end free speech and bring in all the hate speech and restrict our guns. That's what Hillary's now doing. That's what they've already done in Europe with these civil emergencies they put in place. Joe Biggs is getting set up. We're going to go to him on the ground in Orlando in just a moment. I'm Alex Jones with Infowars.com. Our guest site is EnemiesFarnAndDomestic.com. Matt Bracken, former Navy SEAL, best-selling author. Of course, we had Tim Kennedy on in studio yesterday. I talk about an expert on terrorism. Uh, that I mean, he is the expert. Everybody's like, oh, that's the UFC fighter, uh, former Special Forces. No, not former, folks. 
That guy's working all the time. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but uh, six cities set to get hit, and we're just going to hear it's hate crime, hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. Well, of course it's a hate crime, but that's what Islam does. In 11 countries, they kill people because they're homosexuals. All the left cares about is that I use the word gay and that you control the language. You don't care if you're actually getting killed. So that just makes you more of a cause celeb, unless you're the one actually getting bullets shot into you. But I want to go ahead and go to some phone calls, and we're going to go to Biggs here, and we're going to have Mr. Bracken riding shotgun with us, giving us commentary throughout the hour. And then we have uh, coming up uh, David Knight hosting the fourth hour. Leanne McAdoo is going to be with us as well, and we're going to have uh, more special reports uh, and a bunch of these clips. But right now, let's go ahead and go to who's up first here. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to Alex in New York. You're on the air, Alex. Welcome. Uh, if I may, I want to back a little bit in the history to explain the situation that can happen here. Okay, uh, we got to go quick through these calls. Go ahead. Quick. Uh, after World War II, in Russia and Soviet Union, with millions of unregistered guns, which is our government tried to take, of course. So the scenario was uh, they just uh, tried to use NKVD to take the guns, but it was not enough power. What they did, it, it was a very big shortage on food. So offer of the government was, we give you food if you give up your guns or you tell who had the guns. That's what they can do here. EBT cards are already in a big hole. It can be used too. Well, sir, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble making out everything you're saying, but I think you're saying that you, you, you've been in countries, and in, in, I believe you said Russia, where once they had a bunch of people come in and start terror attacks, they were able to take the guns? or Because uh, I didn't even know Russians could really have guns before that unless they were in rural areas and had special licenses. Is, it, is that what you're getting at? No, not exactly. After World War II, it was a millions of guns on the civilian hands. Yes. A million. And the government tried to take them back somehow, some way, and KVD tried to do our way but it wasn't work so offer was to the civilians give up your guns we give you food because in this time it was a very very big shortage on the food yes and i believe the economic collapse is the ace in the hole that they'll use to get everybody domesticated for social engineering you get your food you get your job now in a command and control economy when you submit that's why it's so important for all patriots to have a garden to have shareable food to have firearms to have a bug out pack and to have friends you can count on to come together during a collapse because clearly the system has been organizing an incremental collapse. That's a great point. Uh, Matt Bracken, uh, of course, this is something you've talked a lot about. They're really pushing to make us as much hand to mouth as they can. This is absolutely true what he said. It happened after World War One, which, of course, for Russia was 1917 when Lenin came back. They, did, they also did that with guns turning in. After World War II, many uh, Russian soldiers, Ivans, came home. There was weapons all over the place. And they use starvation as a tool for leverage. You know, if, to get into the camp where you'll be saved from starvation, you have to turn in your weapons. When people often say, Matt, how do you know the future? You know it like you have a, a crystal ball or something. And I've thought about this a lot, and I don't have a crystal ball. What I do is I study history. And it's like a great big wheel with treads around the wheel. And so you look at the ground and you can see the tread patterns that came before. Well, you can easily predict what the tread pattern is going to look like because it's just a wheel coming back down. And we're headed, and what though, he said about with the, the Soviet Union was exactly true. Exactly. Thank you, caller. Great point, uh, Alex, in New York. But because of all the high technology, the population density, cultural events, domestication of the population, everything we've been through before, I believe, is going to be amplified, augmented, and be three or four times, ten times worse with economic collapse, social, uh, cultural degeneration, the Islamic mix into the middle of it, uh, just all the basic craziness, the increases of mental illness. I mean, you look at every metric, society is degenerating. Yeah, at, at a, at a worst-case scenario is, would be my short story called Alas, Brave New Babylon. But I think in the intermediate, you're going to see something similar to my short story called What I Saw at the Coup. Because I do believe that they will try for a gun grab using a pretext of economic collapse, whether or not they're going to help engineer the collapse or just allow the conditions to to uh, metastasize with, you know, bringing in people that they know are jihadists or a percentage. I mean, how many does it take? It's like a jar of candy. If you said, look, most of the candy in this jar is perfectly safe. Maybe 1%, maybe 10% is poison. It's going to kill you. But you have to eat it. Otherwise, you're a hater. 
This is literally the, the situation we're being It's like saying, in. hey, you know, there's only one bullet in uh, the cylinder, but there's six, you know, overall cylinders. You've only got a one in six chances of blowing your head and off. You have to, and you have to try it. You have to play Russian roulette. Well, the, the thing is, yeah, there's a lot of worse conditions on one side, but believe me, there are patriots that are as patriotic as anybody from Valley Forge till now, and we are armed better than ever. There's never in history been a country with tens of millions of scoped rifles that can hit easily, standing offhand, 400-yard targets, and with a rest, 1,000 yards. There are millions. So something that these traders that think that they can just put millions of dollars from the Saudi government in their pocket, laundered through hedge funds, and they're just going to live in Aspen at the uh, you know George Soros farm and live peacefully and happily ever after as the as Uber. Ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Especially when they admit they have plans in the new army manuals for domestic re-education camps for patriots. They actually say re-education camps. Don't you guys get it's a two-way street? They take our restraint as weakness. We've been affecting the battle space, the info war, raising the alarms, preparing the people. We're not flat-footed. And so they need to understand that, that we're identifying them, we're exposing their agenda, and they're still carrying out the agenda like, like we aren't there exposing it and sabotaging it. I, I just, yeah, they're crazy. People should read my short story, What I Saw at the Coup, from the point of view of, view of somebody who uh, is on the unsuccessful end of, a, of an anti-constitutional push, because we have plenty, plenty, plenty of arrows in our court. I was talking to Tim Kennedy. He said 95% of the special forces people that are active duty are fully awake. Fully. And, they, and, I, and I asked him why, and he goes, well, you know the training we've been given, and he talked about it on air. They're training them to take over governorships, take over the states, arrest patriots, take guns, and arrest, you know. It won't work. Media. There aren't enough. There aren't enough. Well, didn't they, they know it would wake up the, the special forces people when they're openly training to basically come arrest Governor Abbott? At the very top, I think that it's a, we're talking about fully satanic evil forces. Below that, they might think, oh, yeah, we're going to, uh, you know, fill in the blank of your favorite outcome, Sharia law in America, progressive leftist socialism, communism. But at the very top, I think they just want to see it burn. That's it. That's it. They want to just blow it up. That's their real plan. That's, that's their, their goal is chaos for chaos sake. I want to go back to Diane, Marguerite, Robert, Chad, West, and others. But right now, let's go to Joe Biggs on the ground outside the Pulse nightclub or what's left of it where 49 people were killed. Uh, Joe Biggs, I know a lot of development since you were last on with us. You're on the trail with some investigative journalists on some things that folks aren't aware of. Uh, but a lot uh, of information coming out. His brother-in-law, Joe Biggs, uh, is, is, is one of Obama's people bringing in the refugees. He was working in Homeland Security, uh, and, and Hillary uh, and Obama ordered the stand down of the FBI in two different investigations of this guy. This is incredible. Uh, what do you think is going on here, Joe Biggs? Well, it's an interesting thing, Alex. I was actually speaking with Rob Jacobson last night, and I said, this man's father looks like he was from a Pashtun area, a tribal region in Afghanistan. And sure enough, it comes out today, this guy is a Taliban sympathizer. He speaks Pashtun, his videos are in Pashtun, and uh, basically has this radical movement in his own, he says he has his own you know, CIA agency that's gonna help him overthrow the government in Afghanistan and uh, you know, bring in this new ruling class. And he also put out videos where homo homosexuals should be killed. So you know where the son got the rhetoric from, you know where the son got those ideas from. So for that father to come out and act shocked that his son did this, it's completely and totally ridiculous. This man belongs behind bars. Now on top of that, I've had actually just spoke with a man who survived. He gave me uh, that was chilling. Okay, his uh, Skype is breaking up, but if you look at DrudgeReport.com, we also have the video on Infowars.com. shows the father in a new video dressed up in a military outfit doing YouTube videos in a military outfit uh, recruiting people saying God will punish the gays. So, I mean, it's clear. This yeah, guy is a wind-up toy of daddy, and I bet they have him on MSNBC praising him and asking him to teach us the wisdom of the jihad or something. I mean, I even forgot to get to that. Meanwhile, there's still, if you're not on DrudgeReport.com or Infowars.com or World Net Daily, they are still blaming gun owners. And Hillary and, and Bernie Sanders say they're coming after our guns. Uh, Matt Bracken, do you really think they'll be able to sell this 
on their idiot constituents, or is there any point at which people are going to wake up and the homosexuals are going to realize under Sharia law in 11 countries, you will have your head chopped off? Okay, I'm not the one chopping a, your dumb head off. I think this is a big wake-up call. I think this is a transformative moment. In a, in a sense, this was a twofer. Uh, he attacked a gay club on Latino night. So any progressive gay Latinos, however many of them there are in the United States, they ain't voting for Hillary. I can tell you that much. Gun owners just went out and bought another case of 556 uh, and, and 762. I can tell you, and a couple more cases of survival food. They're, they can they can plan this, but like I often say, a plan to ride the tiger is not the same as riding the tiger. And they try to take our guns away, they're going to be trying to ride the tiger, and they're going to get the teeth. Doesn't it let Petraeus and all these people know that when my reporters anywhere they go in the world or our listeners now know who they are, we're not just watching Dance with the Stars, we know who the card deck of criminals and traitors are. It's got to really let them understand they're not invincible, they're not gods. If they try to start a civil war in this country, that's, they're going to be brought to justice. Important. That's, it's very important, and that's why I'm, I was so glad to see the video of, of disgraced, suborned, sold-out, bribed General Petraeus running away. That is going to be the video of his career. And I don't want to just harp on General Petraeus, but all the other sellout generals that are sliding out of the Pentagon over to some quote-unquote global hedge fund, which is money laundering operation for Saudi dirty money, to spread jihad and Sharia law through the world as long as they can get their millions. Sure. Infowars and other people are going to be there with a the camera. Let's expand on this, and we're going to go back to calls and then back to Biggs as his Skype uh, degraded. What are they thinking, though, the Saudis? Because they claim, oh, we just export the terror so it doesn't hit us. No, they don't build a 1,000 mosques a year overseas, hundreds here every few years, to just export it. They This is how they're taking over. This has been their plan forever. This is what the Wahhabists are doing. They've been very, very successful. And then now we sit here and see Major Hassan getting programming from Saudi Arabia, the Fort Hood shooter. Uh, we see the San Bernardino going to Saudi Arabia. We see this guy going to Saudi Arabia. We know what's going on. His father, his, his brother-in-law shooting their mouths off, running around, stirring stuff up, running the refugee uh, invasion. I mean, they know what they're doing. It's a military operation. I, I just can't believe Obama thinks he's actually going to get away with this because... This is why they have to get you off the air because, sure, you're just the Alex Jones show. You're not uh, Tom Brokaw, you know, uh, coming out of retirement, pinch hitting on NBC. You're just a, a guy on uh, videos, right? But you're a feeder for the entire world because we get our information off of YouTube. It doesn't matter where it shows up first. And they have to get rid of Matt Drudge. This, they're, they're not even going to allow him to put up the title, a headline, a link. Uh, Hillary Clinton is pushing this UN Resolution 1618, which is an anti-quote-unquote blasphemy law. It's very important to understand that in Islam, blasphemy does not mean telling an untruth about Islam. Blasphemy means... So any, saying anything that harms Islam. I'll give you an example. If you say that Muhammad um, ordered the beheadings of thousands of bound, captured prisoners, and then the taking of their wives as sex slaves, and Muhammad himself took 20% as his cut, all of that is true. And in American jurisprudence, the truth is an absolute defense against libel, blasphemy, whatever what you want to call it. In Islam, truth has nothing to do with anything, just doesn't harm Islam. So Hillary Clinton is actively pushing for UN resolutions, which would not allow us, we'd be as, as uh, hamstrung as the Germans, you know, getting arrested or ticketed for telling the truth about Muhammad. And this is the future that we have under our sellouts. I go back to Carlos Ilyich Ramirez Sanchez, the jackal. It has to be a coalition of socialists and Islamists to take down America, the great Satan. And they're well on their way. It's a program. It's a plan. Hand together the left and the Islamists to destroy freedom. I want to ask you this Hillary question. We're going back to Joe Biggs. Obama's an Alinskyite. Sure. Uh, but, but when they start having a, a couple tax a week and this all goes on, I guess they've psychologically tested the left. They think they'll just submit and blame us 
that are criticizing Islam, and I guess a lot of liberals are so cuckled and, and under such mass Stockholm syndrome that they're going to go out uh, and actually join Islam. In fact, there's a new trend where liberal women go and find an Islamic man and he bosses her around and she likes that. They'll even leave their husband that has kids to go, you know, uh, you know I guess that's being a new form of bondage. And so that's the new trendy thing. And all these liberal publications and uh, things like the Huffington Post tell women, make the Muslims comfortable. You need to start wearing a hijab. And I'm seeing it more and more. Women think it's really sexy and trendy. So are they so weak and, and never had daddies or they hate daddy so much that they don't want to go to somebody that looks like daddy. They want to go to somebody that looks like Habib and will maybe chain them up because it's kind of sexy. I mean, is this kind of like the furthest, you know, the, the next phase of Fifty Shades of Grey is to be in an Islamic rape camp, you know, supporting the rape of five-year-old girls by 100 men until the girl dies. That's a, a real case. It's an unbelievable level of cognitive dissonance. To imagine being a feminist and saying on the one hand that college campuses, which the few men that are left, I think it's like 40%, are a bunch of rapists, right? But you ignore the fact that women are being sold as select sex slaves in Islamic countries today. If you look there, Hillary Clinton put out a Ramadan tweet saying, as we enter Ramadan, we, and there are pictures of her and Chelsea with Arafat wearing hijabs with big S-eating grins on their faces, hugging up on, on Arafat the terrorist in a kafia, I wouldn't be surprised a bit if she had already converted. They don't have to tell you, remember, Takiyah. They can, they can announce later. And her oh, girlfriend's like a Saudi, her, her, her lesbian girlfriend's a Saudi. Yeah, Huma. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a crazy time, but I think that people are waking up. The question is, what will the left do? Uh, the, you know, the what will the left Islam coalition running the White House do if they see people waking up and say demanding? For example, uh, I remember they brought in a bunch of illegal aliens about two years ago during a big border push, and people out in California went and stopped the bus, crowded around the bus. It's if incredible. We got Joe Biggs here, but you're right. We just put up our tweet as we begin Ramadan. You know, we want to salute all the women sexually mutilated and, and wearing bags over their heads. No, she says, as we begin Ramadan, I wish all Muslims a blessed time of reflection, family, and good health. And then she puts yeah. out this, this Ramadan statement. Let's go ahead and go back to Joe Biggs, and I'm going to Margaret, Diane, Robert, Chad. I promise I'm going to your calls. Uh, Joe Biggs, I, I'm told you're chomping. We got you back on phone. Go ahead. Roger that, Alex. I actually had the opportunity to speak with someone who survived the shooting and made it out. I spoke to another man whose friend was a straight guy. He's married, had children. He was bartending and was shot in the leg three times. He said he could hear the bullets shattering bone, piercing flesh. Like, the whole room was full of smoke, and each person I've talked to said there was multiple shooters inside of this nightclub, not just one, like the mainstream media is telling everyone. Every person I've talked to says they believe that there are multiple shooters, which means there is still someone or persons on the loose out here. Wow, so that's area. the breaking news. Start over. This is important, uh, Joe. Uh, Joe Biggs reporting from Orlando. Start over. Talk about who you've talked to. I hope this is on video. This is going to be huge. Yes, yes, we have it all on video. One of the one of the guys, uh, I reached out to a whole bunch of people, names that I saw posting on the Pulse Facebook page of people who said they had friends who were injured and or were injured themselves. And I reached out to these people, and I was able to set up some interviews today. I spoke with one man, his friend. She has the viral Snapchat video that TMZ has posted everywhere. She was uh, filming, and you can hear the gunshots, and then the video freezes. That's when she is hit by multiple gunfire and dies right there wow. on that Snapchat footage. And I have footage of that man talking about the story and, and his friend and uh, about her. I talked to another man who is a straight man as well. He actually goes to that club. He has a lot of friends, and his buddy was a male bartender, a straight man, married, has uh, kids. And uh, he was explaining what the bartender was going through. He said that the bartender saw this man walk into the bar and automatically felt something was wrong. And the next thing you know, he heard gunfire drop to the ground, and he could hear bones splintering, screaming, yelling. People were cut covered in glass, in blood, crawling across the ground. Uh, he said complete and total chaos. 
His Can we analyze so any of the acoustics? How many witnesses, Joe, that you've talked to say, uh, we're about to go to break here and come back right with you. How many people have you talked to that say they saw multiple shooters or heard different shots from different angles? Um, two people I've talked to in person so far today, and then other videos on CBS, ABC News, where these people are explaining how they believe there was multiple shooters and then they were cut off the air. Well, sure. Uh, they don't want to investigate this guy's mosque. I know that. You know, you got the imam saying that uh, it's good to kill the gays, and his dad says it too, but they're all innocent. The gun owners are to blame. Working on breaking news during the breaks. Almost didn't get back in here on time. Leanne McAdoo's here. She's going to be riding shotgun some into the next hour with David Knight. We have our guest, Matt Bracken of EnemiesFarmDomestic.com. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com. I almost want to just let uh, Joe Biggs go and, and get back to their hotel and take these newscasts, these pieces, and these witnesses and put it out. Witnesses say there are multiple shooters. Drudge has a link to an article. Uh, did he have help? I, I mean, come on, folks. He is daddy was putting videos out saying, kill the gays. His imam is saying it on TV. The other imam is saying it in town. The truth is, folks, these people are very arrogant about what they're doing. And the bizarreness is we're then being blamed as gun owners and patriots on the news, like, see what your guns did again? See, uh, and literally, Hillary and Obama brought these people in. She's gotten over $100 million the last six, seven years in her foundation from Gulf State dictators. $100 million. Her alone. She lives like a total queen. She's running around with this gimmick. She's a woman talking about blessed Ramadan. I, and the feminists just love it. What a group of freaks and evil people. And I've never seen Leanne McAdoo this mad. I guess she was out doing reporting. I wanted to come back to Austin. Uh, she was so upset. I was getting texts from like midnight from her. I was sawing logs. And so Leanne McAdoo's here. We're going to go back and say bye to Biggs and, and let him finish up and, and, and then take calls with Bracken here. And, and, and don't worry, callers. Margaret and Mark and Robert and Chad and others. First-time callers, you want to get involved, 800-259-9231. In fact, I probably just shouldn't make people hold for an hour and then make them wait. You know, that's not good. So I'm going to flush the calls, boom, and we're going to let everybody call back in, first-time callers, 800-259-9231, specifically on this, 800-259-9231. Briefly, i got to pay some bills here. It's the last day we're doing it because they didn't take the special down uh, for the air purifier system that comparable units are like 400 bucks or more. Uh, it's normally 240 It's 180-something right now, 26% off the Alexa Pure Breeze uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. It's an amazing system. Uh, we produce triple amount of living defense, uh, harmful organism, parasite cleanse. It's a great formula. But it's so hard to source all these ingredients and have them totally clean and pure. It took us six months to get the 27 ingredients and to have this produced by our Texas lab. Uh, so it's $34.95, but I'm going to end that special today. So we hold back a little bit. Uh, in the next month before more comes in. It might be three or four months again. We, we're hoping it's just a month. Uh, but InfoWarsLife.com, get your living defense today. Amazing results for myself. You can read the reviews at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com is the umbrella site. And your purchase of the products, whether it's storable food or uh, you know, non-GMO heirloom seeds or water filtration systems or Hillary for prison shirts, all of it funds an organization that is scarily effective for just seeing the facts, having the guest, cutting through the bowl, teleprompter free, uh, blowing the narratives wide open, just exposing the new world order. Uh, I mean, we've got the zeitgeist, and that's why we got great products, great prices, uh, and supporting us is buying your war bonds. But I'm a capitalist and a free market guy, so we have great cutting-edge products, great competitive prices. It's a win, 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 win. I love it. People say, Alex, you know, if we got a shortfall this month, you're discounting everything so much, and, yeah, sales are up, but profits aren't. Why are you doing it? I just say, listen, this is what I like to do. Uh, so that's what we're doing, and I'm expanding in the face of this, and I just know the sales are going to come in to be able to cover everything we need to cover because for me it's not about money. Money is like ammunition in a gun or fuel in a, you know, in a tank I'm going to run over the enemy with. Uh, to me, the fortune I want is liberty and freedom and not being blamed for jihad attacks when we're the ones that warned of it and know how to stop it. But that's all oh, the gays, the hate crime. It's the Islamic attack with his daddy and his imam saying, kill the gays. And Junior's got a homeland security contract and his brother-in-law shipping the jihadis in. And they're all a bunch of arrogant bastards on TV. I have clips of imams saying, you do not get political. Mm. 
you knew more and we all just sit here and politically correct you know roll over like a dog and start you know you, i just had enough leanne you're pretty pissed i want to go back to biggs and then our guest here in some calls uh but i said i'm gonna take calls there's so much breaking news leanne you are really angry at least you were last night why are you so angry well, I was angry and I was, I could not stop crying. I was just so upset. One of the things that just made me so frustrated was you have people going, oh, that's so terrible. Pray for Orlando. And then straight back to taking selfies and going to the, the bread and circuses, watching the games. Like, this is not the new normal. So it's just a signal. Oh, yeah. It, it's like I saw some of the attorney generals and stuff on TV and, and federal prosecutors like it was a rock stars and like it was fun and the great job they did standing yeah. down for three hours. Right. I mean, it's just infuriating that they're trying to just wash over this, immediately come out. You know, we, we've been saying for months, what are what are the LGB, LGBT activists, what are these people, the leftists, going to say when Islam starts attacking the gays here in this country because they're completely ignoring the fact that they're throwing them off roofs? Well, now we see what happens. They, they, they blame throw us. their own group under the bus. Like, thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. We tried to stop this, and now you're blaming us, you pieces of crap. Right. They're so... And you're not a piece of crap because you're gay. You're a piece of crap because your head is full of manure, and you're led by a bunch of people that hate your guts. Because you bow at the altar of political correctness and throw your own people who are now literally dying at the, at, at the hands of this, and you refuse to call it out for what it is. Hillary if you bring up 11 Islamic countries kill gays... Right. They go, shut up, homophobe. I'm flagging you on Facebook, piece of crap. Don't you besmirch your religion. Right. Then they badmouth Christianity all day. Exactly. They're just Christian haters. Let's just get down to the brass tacks, okay? And then to The have liberals are a bunch of mentally ill. Mm -hmm. uh, they're into bondage. Right. And then to parade this guy's dad out or the imam from uh, the mosque and to have him as some relevant a point of view when he's on camera praising the Taliban and down with the West and all of this. Like, and why do we bring this piece of filth here then? Get the hell out of the country. Him and his mom need to have their asses shipped back to that hell hole. Exactly. And then to say, you know, it's the loving thing to do to kill the gays. That you need to kill gay people. And that kind of sounds like such an, a, a weird perv, too. Oh, it's so creepy. And uh, We love them. We kill them. We, I mean, I want to, I mean... Let's go back to Bracken briefly, and then I'm going to go to Biggs and give him the floor because he's on the phone chomping. But I want to get Biggs back. In fact, let's go to Biggs first. Biggs, finish up with this huge news that there are people saying, and now I see it here in the news, there were all these shooters, multiple people. He had help. This was going on. Uh, the government stands down for three hours. Uh, that uh, really something stinks here. What do you think's going on? I mean, we got Obama and Hillary protecting this guy from A to Z. I mean, the, the, the fact that President Obama comes out and calls this an act of hate slash act of terror takes away from what it really is. It's the fact that he can't, continues to call it what it is, radical Islam. By calling it hate, what he's doing, he's taking the pressure off of the FBI, the people who are supposed to be monitoring these uh, lunatics and uh, protecting the American people. That's what he does when he uses the word hate. He simplifies it down to make it just a hate crime, and then it can't be blamed on these alphabet agencies who are supposed to know what's going on. And the fact that they had this guy on the radar, they sat down, they talked with him numerous times, and this still happened? The fact this guy was able to have that kind of clearance to work for a security company that's a, that's a branch or a, a contracting and then his And then his brother-in-law is, is shipping the jihadis in? This is an organized but, plan. That's why Obama but, can't but stop we have, it. We have, inf we have the information that there's going to be, what, about seven attacks? This month alone, this is Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Guess what's happening this Friday? A gay pride parade in downtown New Orleans. If you've never been there, that place is ripe for the picking. That is very nope. narrow passageways. That is some spot. That's the spot that could be possibly the next uh, terror attack. They're going to continue to uh Absolutely. And, and, and Biggs, I know you want to go there. Be very safe. Uh, Biggs is a target of these people. We don't like to make a big deal out of that, but they've put him in their videos and things, actual ISIS. And uh, they're just scum of the earth, funded by Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia needs to know, you know, we're going to bring out the 28 pages. We're going to expose you. We're not going to go away. And you guys are just so arrogant. I don't care how many people bow down to you or if you go to the Bush's ranch. Uh, you know, this treason, when we're done with you collaborators, is going to all come out. 
And, and listen, folks, I'm not looking for trouble with the New World Order, but they are not going to back off us. They're coming after our guns. They're demonizing Christianity. They're demonizing free speech. They're demonizing the family. They are searching everybody at the airport, but women wearing hijabs. Mm -hmm. It's like Muslims are God, and I've had enough of it. Uh, Joe Biggs and Rob Jacobson, great job there on the ground. I'm looking for you guys to follow those reports uh, with the video clips and stuff. As soon as you do, we'll, they'll go viral, okay? Yeah, we're heading back to the, uh, the hotel right now. We're going to get some Wi-Fi and then get those videos out. All right, fabulous job, Joe Biggs. Uh, I want to go to calls here because people have been holding, but Matt Bracken uh, riding shotgun with his former Navy SEAL. Uh, again, we don't even have the staff or the crew to go get him two months ago and a month ago predicting all of this. We even said nightclubs were the main target. Mm -hmm. uh, I've said that hundreds of times. It clearly is escalating. This will embolden them. This will get more of these cells to attack. And I guess we're going to have the, the surreal moment when they just say, we've got to take your guns, as Hillary's now saying, and we've got to pass hate laws where nobody can talk bad about a religion because you're stirring up the Muslims. That's the same thing they've already done in Europe. It is outrageous. And I'm here to tell you, folks, we're coming to the time when they're going to send the FBI to my offices or to Matt Drudge's office or to Bracken's office. It's already happening to FBI agents. I was talking to, uh, to uh, Tim Kennedy. He knows federal officers all over the country that actually are have human in these mosques where they're calling to kill and attack like this one. And when they even file something for an investigation, they get a criminal investigation wow. for civil rights violation. And so one guy got mad and actually went in the mosque, waited till they said it, and said, how, which I would go to a church. They One time they had a synagogue calling for gun bans. I went and spoke in the synagogue, and they got real mad at me, but I was nice and stood up and said, you know, Hitler took the guns. Why are you doing this? You're crazy. And they blew up and kicked me out. The point is, is that they're charging this guy with a hate crime. So... I, I mean, I guess we're just going to sit here and let them blow us up and shoot us and then just right. kiss Obama's butt. What do you think the end game here is, Matt Bracken? Disarmament, because you can't, you can't truly turn this country into a slave state until we're disarmed. So they're going to do everything under the, under the auspices of gun safety. I have a video floating around called Democide, Socialism, Tyranny, Guns, and Freedom. Uh, the Katyn Forest, they, they disarmed the Polish officers, massacred them, clamped communism over Eastern Europe. Uh, I, to my gay friends, I got a quick comment. I have a great friend named Oleg Volk, like Volkswagen. He has a website called Self-Defense as a Human Right. Go there as your entry portal. I know a lot of people didn't grow up in the gun culture like many of us did. You didn't serve in the military. You're, you know, your family didn't have any guns. Go to selfdefenseasahumanright.com, and it's your portal. You can go into a gun store, I don't care if you're gay or straight, and you explain that you have absolutely starting at, at the beginner level and you will be taken in. They won't care about anything else except the fact that you're an American, you're a human being, and self-defense is a human right. They'll steer you right, they'll, they'll start you off, and in a couple weeks you can even have a concealed permit. And it's People so need uh, to folks be armed. That... Mike Judge, two years ago, uh, before it even launched Silicon Valley, he invited me out to his big ranch outside Austin, beautiful house up on a hill. He could shoot 360. And he had basically the whole cast, about 20 people of, of Silicon Valley there. And they were almost all anti-gun. They all knew who I was. They were kind of freaking out. Within one hour, I had women, you know, all of them just giggling, laughing, saying, yeah, I'm a good person. Why can't I have an AR-15? Why can't I have it? They were shooting women. were shooting 50 caliber rifles within two hours. Mm -hmm. We're eating barbecue, having a great time. And, and I sat there with Judge. He goes, yeah, I like to do this with any new cast, any new show I have. Come, come back out next time. And we've done that some more with other cast of shows. And he wants me to be in a movie and stuff. But the point is, point is, is that, is that we're just sitting there with barbecue and guns, all safe, shooting off a porch. And there were women with, with, with M4s within an hour and a half shooting bullseye at 200 yards. And we drive up you know, in the trucks to the targets on the stumps, and they and these are like, you know, really good-looking, you know, uh, movie star women. They go, ah, ah, I did it! I, no, they, they were shooting bullseye in an hour and a half, and we had just converted them in an hour. Mm -hmm. Not to Islam to go, you know, put bags on their heads, but to be real powerful women right. ready to stand up. And that's what it's all about, isn't it, Bracken? That is. Firearms in the right hands means empowerment. They call it an assault weapon, but if it's in the hands of a good person, it's a defense weapon. When the Department of Homeland Security buys truckloads of M4s, they call them a personal defense weapon. How come it's not an assault weapon? Mm. Well, uh, and that's why they don't want women to, go, I mean, that's why Biden said, don't get an AR-15, women. It'll knock you down because they know it's so comfortable. It's the perfect firearm for a woman. <laughs> yeah, it's hysterical. But it's, it's really about empowerment 
and the, the progressives don't want people empowered. They want them to be slaves. They want them to think that a firearm has some inherently evil component inside of it that turns people into raging maniacs. Maybe it's projection. That's a psychological term. People that don't control their own feelings and emotions, maybe they think that if I had a gun, I might go crazy and shoot my wife. That's exactly. Buzz Bissinger on a show on CNN said, I want to kill Alex Jones. And then he said later on the show, he goes, I'm mentally ill. I want to kill myself. That's why I think we should take guns. I spend all my money on women's clothes. And he was just like, okay, fine. He's flipping out saying he wants to kill me. He can't have a gun because he wants to kill himself. And he wants women's clothes. And I was just like, he, he's a raving loon. Right. Projecting. Yeah, I mean, I've had guns. I've been shooting shotguns since I was four years old. Never hurt anybody. So how am I bad? I was shooting birds when I was five years old. How am I evil? Well, think progress. They wanted you to know that this is the gun that committed the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. We're going to talk more about that with David Knight coming up. We're going to ride shotgun with him, Leanne McAdoo. Stay with us, Mr. Bracken with us. Now we're going to go to your calls. I apologize. We're doing it now. Uh, let's go to Diane in Oregon. You're a trooper. You're on the air. Uh, what do you make of this? Is the Second Amendment to blame? Uh, or is it radical Islam? I would have to say it's our government. Uh, I actually, the only reason I called is because I wanted to give you a warning. I know when they're going to start martial law. I know exactly when they're going to start it, and we kind of checkmated it ourselves. Let me explain. Um, with everything with Hillary Clinton, she is not allowed to run for presidency at all. She is being um, investigated, but yet here comes Obama, and he's supporting her. What is that going to do when the primaries come up or the election comes up in the, on the 16th of November? A lot of people that listen to you are going to riot. If she gets presidency, we're going to riot. Uh, libertarians and conservatives don't normally do that, but but listen, I, uh, that's a good question, though, for our guests. Thank you, Diane. Um, let's uh, go ahead and go back to Mr. Bracken. What about the civil emergency card? They've already done it in Europe. What if Hillary does get indicted? They're going to activate the George Soros crowds and Black Lives Matter and the jihadis to riot, uh, not, not the other way around. What do you think? If, if it looks like uh, Donald Trump is going to win, let's say that you know, there are a few more of these uh, jihadi attacks, maybe at a much higher level, and uh, the polls are going, you know, 70% Trump, and it looks like he's going to sweep like Reagan. In that case, I think that they'll, they'll uh, try to accelerate any kind of a scheduled scenario um, to create such chaotic conditions that there can't be elections held. It would be very easy to do. You could, for example, start a rumor that, you know, these evil white NRA racist crackers are planning to shoot poor black folks waiting in the polling line. And then therefore, you false flag and do gonna, it. Mm -hmm. Right. They're, then they're, that will suppress the vote. Therefore, the election can't be held. Or let's say that there is uh, these 20 Metcalf station attacks the power goes out in a big part of the country. As I often say on the internet, no elections. If there's no electricity, then there's wow, just an emergency stay there. law. All right, it's the final segment of the three-hour broadcast, but a lot of stations carry the fourth hour now. David Knight is going to be co-hosting with myself and Leanne McAdoo. I'll be here for at least 30 minutes the next hour. I'm going to be going to your phone calls. There's a bunch of clips I haven't gone to. I need to recap the breaking news. Bottom line, I cannot believe the fingerprints of the Obama administration and Hillary protecting this guy. His whole family is just a nest of, of super dangerous people. I mean, if I was on air saying kill gays, I would expect to be arrested because I'm a talk show host, and I, that's a call to action, mm -hmm. okay? And if somebody's calling for killing me, I want something done about it. Well, you know what? The left can call for killing Donald Trump, and they've got Facebook pages with 300,000 likes, and they won't arrest the people that are doing it. The New York Times can have a writer call for killing Trump. Uh, they can have uh, Glenn Beck keeps calling for it. Now, he did get kicked off XM because of it. But, I mean, it's just this climate where they can call for hurting us, and then I don't want to hurt them. I just want them to go back to their own places and kill themselves. You know, <laughs> just go kill yourselves somewhere else. I'm sorry my daughters aren't going to wear freaking bags on their heads. And if you try to boss me around, I'm going to... I'm getting pushed too far here is what I'm telling you. Leanne, you, I've never seen you so pissed off air, and you really just gave us a good you know, reason why. Go ahead and go through that again if you can recreate that. Well, it's just the fact that we just had a massive terror attack here in America, and everyone's like, oh, hashtag pray for Orlando. Oh, okay, 
Well, we got to get rid of that terrible gun that committed the m m deadliest Enough shooting. is enough. The gun, look at Think Progress. This is the gun it's that committed the, the deadliest shooting. This is the Ford F-150 that committed the running over the crowd. What horse crap? Right, it's not what? the killer. What? These people are a freaking cult of scum. It's not the killer. It's not religious intolerance. It's not radical Islam. Why would Think police? Progress be allied with radical freaking Islam? It's this inanimate object. This... Bracken see Bracken shopping at the bit, and I swore to go to calls. And, and if Bracken wants to go a little bit longer with us, too, pop it in, he can. If he's got to go, I understand. But I, I, I at least want him to do 10 more minutes the next hour to give us some of his ideas for solutions. But right now, let's jam in at least one or two calls before we go to break. James. Let's talk to James, and then we'll go to Mark in Tennessee and uh, West, Marguerite, and Robert. And then, I'm, and then that's it for calls. But James, go ahead. Hi, Mr. Jones. Good to talk to you. Good to talk to you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, just yeah, I'm, I'm a retired 24 years in the United States Army and Marine Corps, retired special operations and military intelligence. Just a little background for you. Um, I'm calling because of an article I came across um, regarding a study that was published in the American Journal of Political Science a few years back. Now, this is a study that has been touted by the left for years. This has been their cornerstone of why they're righteous. The copy, the, the title of this is the was a correlation, not not causation, the relationship between personality traits and political ideologies. Now, the thing is with this study, they show that certain individuals with certain political ideologies tend to have certain causational reasons for this. And they also tend to show certain psychological aspects, such as certain psychoses. Turns out that these people tend to be liberal. The study, when published, um, and this is a, a journal run by the New York Times, I saw it last week. A big, giant, prestigious journal reversed itself and right. said that people that call themselves liberal are basically schizophrenic, paranoid, victimology, screwballs who are antisocial and don't give money and steal and are basically mentally ill, borderline personality disorder flunkies. And the, the modern world, because people were never put through trials and tribulations when they were young, is actually producing what you'd call spoiled, rotten, uh, you know, 35-year-old toddlers. <laughs> Is that what you're getting at? Yeah, exactly, sir. And now here's the thing. This fits into Hillary completely because you see how she acts. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Before that study came out, Paul put a video out a few weeks ago likening them to two-year-old babies. Right. And that's exactly how they act. And I'm just fed up with it. And see, anybody that puts up with a spoiled brat, they bully you if you get on a spoiled brat's butt. They grovel to you, just like you said with Muslims. Bracken did. It's either on their knees or at your neck, or is it at your neck or on your knees? Bracken, stay right there. I want to come back to you briefly. Great point, James. God bless you. And then we're going to Marguerite, Robert, Mark, and West. Leanne McAdoo's here. Alex Jones is here. I can't help it. I'm doing the fourth hour with David Knight. There's so much. Let's find out from Bracken how much more time he can do riding shotgun with us. And now they won't tell you that Daddy, I mean, it's admitted even in CBS News, but they're not connecting the dots. They just hide it in plain view. Oh, yeah, Daddy said kill the gays in videos and dresses up on YouTube in military outfits. He's obviously one of these crazy Mujahideen brought back after the 1980s. That's what he is. I mean, the minute Biggs, who fought these people for years, was almost killed by them repeatedly, blown up an armored vehicle, shot, you name it, saw him in the news, he's like, oh, it's a Pashtun, red alert. Sure enough, that's what it was. And now we're sitting here with the uncle and the, uh, the brother-in-law, and they're all involved in homeland security, shipping in the Muslims. I mean, the talk about obvious, but they don't want to arrest all these people. They don't want to roll them up right now because it's too obvious. And I was told by Pentagon sources, as close to this as you can physically get, I can't believe our sources, how good they are. But I'm surprised a lot of good folks actually in the military and in the Army that uh, really don't like what's happening. Mm -hmm. And they know we'll, we'll talk about it, but they are on the ground there, and there's whole cells in Orlando. They think Orlando is the main strike site. And, and you made a great point during the break, Leanne. Well, there is no such thing as Islamophobia. It's not an irrational fear at this point. They are literally killing us now in our own country. It's not irrational to be afraid. My eight-year-old daughter has a cat, wants a cat, changing the cat box in her room, the litter box, and she goes, Daddy, what type of spider is this? So I go upstairs and I go, that is a brown recluse. So I grab it, put it in a jar, go show her online, I go, that can kill you. She goes, oh, I need to be scared of it. I said, yeah, you need to be scared of that kind of spider. Now, we're, now we go out on a boat or something, there's big spiders. Oh, those are water spiders, not a problem. Black widows, brown recluses, here they are. You be scared of these. It's not a rational fear. Is it, Mr. Bracken? Exactly right. In fact, probably I would say it's safe to say that the, the, the most Islamophobic people are Muslims who are just trying to keep a low-profile life. 
because they know that people get beheaded. They'll they'll walk they'll wake up in the morning and there'll be a note, you know, nailed to their door saying you're on a death list and it's not a joke. So the the most of people afraid of Islamists are people that are cultural Muslims. They happen to have had the luck of being born in that part of the world. They just want to get along. But they're, that, that's what the whole purpose of the five prayers a day. It's social control. Who's bucking the system? Who's not praying? It's a visible means of control. And I, I want to mention something. Uh, when they call us an infidel, it's really a bad translation because an infidel is like a is a Latin root, like fidelity, uh, that that root. But what they call us is much closer to dirty N word, cuffer. So I, that's right. somebody South, sent me this T-shirt. In fact, in South um, Africa, that's what they the, the 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 word for black folks is that. So yes, that 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 is a Arab slave term, which means yeah, and the and the Arabic word for slave and black man is the same word. Just incidentally, other things they don't tell you. Isn't that perfect so that Cassius that Clay is, that, that Cassius Clay changed his name from a abolitionist white person to the name of a slave owner? Exactly. At the and the, the name was picked for him by Elijah Muhammad, you know, the the uh, head of the black Muslims. So it's it's really crazy. The um you know, the slavery has, has never been outlawed in Islamic countries. You can have for a time being a secular government on top of an Islamic society. But the underlying Sharia completely permits slavery because Muhammad was slave catcher number one. He caught when when they brought in the slaves after their raids. That was the reason why Islam spread so fast. After he went to and it said Mecca, his skin was completely India. white repeatedly in the Quran. I've read the quotes, so it's a white slave owner. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... Right, and he got twenty percent of the sex slaves as his cut. So you can't say that Muhammad did anything wrong. So any Muslim that says slavery is evil is risking getting his head cut off by the radicals. I'm just sick of everybody shaking their finger at me as a white devil when I hadn't done jack crap. I'm getting tired of it. Right. Well, and there's right. also this whole resurgence of, you know, the original black roots. And they say, well, we were originally Muslim. No, you weren't. That's because the slave trade happened there first for way more than yeah, 400 North Africa, years. North Africa. They've tricked them all. Well, all I know is it's crazy. It's all a I know. war for your mind. That's what it is. It it's is. We're going right to mind. the calls, and then David Knight, right to the calls. Mark, Robert, Margaret, Wes, I'm going right to you. My friends, it is a war, and I'm not going to roll over and die. The truth is when we engage, we get stronger, the enemy gets weaker. But we have to just stop listening to all the political correctness and, and, and stop being guilted into shutting up and submitting. In fact, Leanne McAdoo has got a tweet she put out at Real Alex Jones Everybody should retweet to Kim Kardashian. And it's this type of stuff where we can hijack the meme and reach folks that aren't tuned into news and information but get their news from entertainment sources. She's of Armenian descent. A million Armenians got killed by the Muslim Turks for no reason. And, oh, by the way, just last week there was the big controversy where the U.N. had said there had been some human rights abuses by the Saudis. Well, they run the U.N. commission. They bought it. You know, they paid hundreds of millions for the chairmanship. And the head of the U.N., had to go out and apologize at a press conference, but admit he was pressured. Then the Saudi ambassador comes out and says, we did no such thing. I mean, Saudi Arabia, folks, is literally the most, it's probably worse than North Korea for people I've talked to that have been in both places, okay? I mean, it is a freaking cult. But so many other people have been bought off by it, they go along with it. But to see this happen, and then people are like, oh, what's the Armenian genocide, who cares? It just shows how crazy it is that, that Muslims, everywhere they go, they always say they're friendly at first till they become 5%, 10%. Then they start attacking till they drive you out of the area mm -hmm. like they're, you know, fire ants or, you know, Africanized bees. This is their program. I mean, show some of these headlines. Think progress. This is the gun that committed the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. Then we're going to calls. Yeah, this is the gun that committed it, not the killer. Liberals quick to blame guns, not the killer in Orlando terrorist attack. Clinton comes out immediately and blames the weapon of war. Well, the weapon of war that was used in this attack in San Bernardino and others, 9-11, was the Quran, not this. She ordered the stand down when it was used at the State Department over this guy. This guy runs a whole nest. It looks like his whole family are operatives. Yeah, the Quran is the real weapon of war that no one will talk about. Let me ask Bracken, and then I'm going to ask uh, David not this question. We're going to write to your calls, Mark and Robert, M Marguerite and Wes and others. Clearly, if the 
dads running around in military outfits calling for the killing of gays on videos, uh, but saying, oh, sorry about my son, but, but, but don't sensationalize it. He wasn't his his, his brother-in-law runs bringing refugees in and, you know, works in an anti-Trump campaign and, and loves Obama. This guy's a Hillary supporter. This guy was a registered Democrat, the shooter. And then meanwhile, they're all over the news blaming the American people. How can something this illogical go on, A, and then B, doesn't this look suspicious, his whole family and this mosque? How the hell does his mosque call for the killing of gays on TV? Well, go back to the uh, to the Carlos the Jackal. It's a, it's a coalition of the progressive left socialists and the Islamists. You know, they, they want to um, beat us down. Islam needs submission. They tell us even Bush got hoodwinked, or I don't know what he, what he knows, but he said Islam is, means peace. It means submission. It means shut up and get with the program or you're going to lose your head, literally. You know, they lie so much. Lying is holy in Islam if you're lying to us dirty, filthy cuffers. Mm -hmm. So you can't look at an imam. I, look, I call them imam taqiyya mm -hmm. or taqiyya imams. That's holy lying. Anything that promotes Islam is halal. And they call us good. black, white, it doesn't matter, dirty N-words. Kafir is the original N-word. Right. The, and that's I, I cannot believe us. this, man. This is crazy. That's what they call us. The, the thing that happened in, in San Jose is extremely important for people to, to understand. <laughs> this is a is right out of the 1930s Germany. This is brown shirt stuff. This is the police being held back, like German police, you know, just the actual official German police being held back Walmart. while the SA went and beat up Jews and smashed stores. This is the beginning of SA tactics. I expect to see this at the conventions and other Trump rallies. And look at what happened to the S.A. Brown shirts after they were done. Night of the Long Knives. Right, including the Rome and the other homosexual Nazis. Who yeah, was so they, cultic they to Hitler, so cool. even after they started shooting him in the jail cell, he, he was hiling Hitler. Right. <laughs> this, this, is, this isn't surprising, this kind of cognitive dissonance. Liberals are on a war against free will. They don't believe that we're intelligent enough to have a gun. Only police officers and the military are smart and well-trained enough to own guns, not us ordinary peasants. But almost all police and military are all for citizens having guns because they actually know guns. Right. But what, what happened at the nightclub where there was an armed police officer? Liberals should have been thinking this is perfect. We have a government employee with an ID card and a uniform and a gun guarding the nightclub. What, where is he? If there's 50 dead sheep, there should be either a dead wolf or a dead sheep. Let me tell you something. I mean, look, if I knew that was going on in the parking lot, I'd have come in there with my M4. I mean, it'd be so easy to take that guy out. I just cannot believe this keeps happening. Notice in Texas, the guys pulled their guns and were dead in seconds. Garland. Yeah, I mean, that's just what Garland. it comes down to. Let's go to phone calls. Mark in Tennessee. Mark, thanks for holding. You're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. I'm a reader of Matt Bracken's books, and... I remember reading his last, uh, one of his trilogies, uh, and it specifically dealt with uh, La Raza. And I, I had never even heard of it um, until I picked up his book. And, and they're like born supremacy kind of books. They're a lot of fun to read. It was so prescient and was, was literally almost quoting headlines that were just appearing at the time I was reading the book. It, it, I, I got, sh I got uh, shakes I was reading it because it was so... It was like reading. Well, that's because Bracken's aware of the real plan. And he puts it in novel form. Yeah, yeah, I, I was blown away by it. So that's the first thing I want to say. And, and I don't know anything about Matt Bracken, so I'm not like you know paid review. No, he's a great right guy. He's right here. That's, that's fine. That. <laughs> no, they're great books. Yeah, Go ahead. The, oh, they are. The other thing is, is that you know the, the real answer with all this is just technology. Um, let's say they ban guns. Great, buy a 3D printer, knock out your own receiver. Um, and I'll then see. in terms of and, and the 3D printer, by the way, is you know these days you can buy a pretty decent one for 300 bucks. The hardest thing for any of us are the primers. Um, I think Bracken might have an opinion on that, but, I mean, basically, we are sidestepping this leviathan of the government by outwitting them with technology. And, you know, they, they eventually can't ban 3D printers and all these other things, even though they're trying to ban, ban drones. Well, that's what I wanted to ask Bracken before he leaves. That's a great question. Thank you, Mark, in Tennessee. How do we resist this? Obviously, we get bold. We exercise our free speech. We run for office. We create our own media platforms. Um, we go out and, I mean, look, it's, it's humet, folks. I have infiltrated the anti-gun groups, caught the bribery, and stopped gun bills in Texas 
18 years ago. I'm not bragging. I was nobody special, but I had the will to stand up against folks trying to take my guns. I exposed people stealing farmers and ranchers' property. People went to jail over that. I exposed the cable commission takeover of Access TV, sent the director to prison. And I'm telling you, any time I've taken action, I'm not bragging. People, I mean, I bring them down. And I'm just telling you, so many folks just don't have the will to stand up and take action. I'm not yeah. that smart, folks. I've been we on there. Be brave. Go ahead. We have to be brave. We have no choice. They want us to submit. That's the meaning of Islam. It's also uh, very allied with socialism. Their motto is the ends justify the means. You have to, you know, break a few eggs to create an omelet, as Mal said, meaning murder millions of people. We have to be brave. We owe it to the next generation. The torch of freedom has been going for 200 years. Damn if it's going to drop on my watch without, you know, me dying in a, in a uh, you know, brass up to my knees. Because whether or not we can make primers, we'll take the damn things from the, from the stooges on the other side. Um, but in the meantime, before the hot phase of Civil War II breaks out, I consider ourselves now in Civil War cold phase before it breaks out, this alternative media platforms are critical. The internet could be taken away. But in the meantime, great websites like Western Rifle Shooters Association, which does not refer to uh, sporting, uh, you know, to, to shooting targets. It means like Western civilization, people with rifles. That's where I go. That's like a, an exchange for ideas on conducting the resistance. Sure. And, and, and let me give folks some good news. The delusional leftist and control freaks they always think they're invincible. They're mentally ill. They're megalomaniacs. We're holding back trying to fix things peacefully. They're arrogant, but most of what they do ends up failing. It's just that we're not resisting enough. So even though their failures just continue on because they're able to try, try again, they're biting That's off why... more than they can chew in this phase. I'm here to tell you, they're going to lose people. The question is, how bad is it going to be in the process? We're only affecting at, the battle space right now. Go ahead. And at some point, at some point, I expect the lights to go off. At some point, I expect uh, we'll see there's some big emergency, a big bright flash scene in the Middle East, and an hour later, the network news is off. Then we'll be on our own. That's when a purge might begin. Well, I've got news for the boys and girls down in the fusion centers. You've got powerful computers and all the data mining and the predictive programs, but you've also trained millions of special ops troops. You've got millions of people, millions, with rifles that can hit at 1,000 yards. And that's why I'm so glad to see the, the images of these traders running away at Bilderberg. Well, let me give you the good news. Look, I'm sure you know this already. Most people in the fusion yeah. centers are awake and, and are on our side. Not even five years ago. I, I, I don't think there's hardly any police except in the leftist-controlled areas, the police are super awake. I, they're going to go back and take care of their families if this goes down. Right. Well, this is very important to remember. It all, and this is why I picked the name Enemies Foreign and Domestic, you know, 12 years ago when I wrote my first novel. Uh, it has to do with the oath that we take. We don't take an oath to homeland security or to the patria or fatherland or the Fuhrer. We take an oath to support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So word to the generals, and domestic. We're paying attention. It's like Santa Claus. We're making a list, and we're checking it twice. When the lights go out, if you think there's going to be some kind of a purge, and when we wake up, we, we're in a socialist paradise, you might not wake up. So it's just something for them to think about. Mm. Well, look, I mean, there's some top generals that are sold out, but, you know, it was General Dempsey and others who went to Obama and said, we're not going to back al-Qaeda in Syria. The word is there's pretty much like a Mexican standoff in the government right now. I hope so. I'm going to skip this break. I'm going to skip this break. It's just too important with the terror attacks that have happened. We're doing a fourth hour anyways. I want to go to two more phone calls, and, and I'm going to start handing it over to David Knight, and Bracken wants to go with the rest of the hour, and Leanne's going to be here. I've got to go do planning and a bunch of journalistic research for big stories we're about to launch. It's just a total war room here. Total, it's totally crazy. Uh, and the amount of intel we get fed now that's so accurate. i got to say, the information I've been given by people in the Pentagon and Congress has always been dead on. Uh, the information I give people like Roger Stone, dead on. And I realize with the folks that really care about this country, they, the, you know, they know what's going on, and they're not just pushing propaganda out through this outlet. They're risking their lives giving us the info they're giving. And, and I'll tell you what's happened. There's now reached a critical mass in the military at the uh, special ops and then officer levels above that. 
that people are so pissed about what's going on, they don't even care anymore. So I think the establishment's pushed back that past that point where, where, where people kept hoping we could just play patty keg and things would get better. And once the real war starts, which it is an info war now, and it's going to continue to be one, I hope, that once the gloves are off, once you're in a fight, you're not scared anymore. Or, or you were never scared to begin with. Once once the fight's going, hey, you wanted this, you're going to get it. Yes. And, and I'm already seeing yes. that attitude in people that they're just done playing games. Are you seeing that, Bracken? Absolutely. Absolutely. The nervousness is is on the ride in. You know, after, after it's flying around, then it's, you know, you're just doing what you're going to do. Absolutely. And if anybody that's... If, the thing also I have to say is we're really... The, the liberals have been raising a, a generation of sissies in Germany, in America, and they want a generation of sissies, timid sissies. But we're not all sissies. There are still men that raise their sons right, and daughters. I mean, my, my, sons and daughter, my son and daughter, they shoot. And, I, and I'm telling you, we're not all sissies out here. They would like to beat us down into a bunch of passive metro, metros, but it's not going to happen. There are patriots out here that are as brave as, you know, Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. And when, the, when it comes to it, even if the power goes out, you know, the, the old saying, uh, uh, think globally, act locally, well, that, that could go for Civil War II also. So like Santa Claus, we're making a list and checking it twice. Now, all I know is I look at Hillary and Obama and these weak people, and they're doing all this evil stuff. They're like vandals. Like, it's satanic. They want to just burn it down, then not make it better. They're just crazy. Robert in Orlando, then Marguerite in Oklahoma. Mark, Robert, thanks for holding so long. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, Alex. How you doing? I'm doing all right, uh, brother. I'm real I sad for the people that are Orlando. dead. Yes, I live over here in Orlando. I'm actually a candidate for Orange County uh, Commissioner. My name is Robert Melanson. Anyway, uh, about two months ago in March, actually, we had a, a shooting in one of the nightclubs. It was uh, on Universal Boulevard, which is more uh, near the, the tourist areas over there. And uh, I was going around campaigning because all the nightclubs have uh, Orlando police details there. They have extra duty police officers there. And I rose the uh, issue of why are they not putting a metal detector wand and checking the people going in uh, before they even can enter into the club. The last shooting that we had, there was three extra OPD officers over there. Now, you're gonna. You can check on the official city website what's going on uh, over here. They will not report what actually occurred, and say it in the in the actual what actually happened because he was in the club shooting, and then he was chased out of the club, so he left out of there, and then he went back in. You see, and there. I mean, all I know is if somebody there. tried that here, there's a gun under every table. I just, it's so alien to me, people just like jellyfish who just have no guns, no, I mean, the parking lot should have been full of guns. I mean, I just, I, it's just hard to believe people that roll over. Mm -hmm. it, it, it really is. Well, let me ask you this. Why do you think the SWAT teams stood down for three hours? Well, I think that they should have just busted the doors down. The police acted suboptimally, and it really hurts me that I have to criticize the police, but uh, the mayor had put in the, uh, an email about what, you know, what the uh, police chief was praising about how the incident unfolded and everything else. But at the end of the day, um, I spoke to one of the opposition candidates. He's a former OPD officer. The police, they get so many emails throughout the week that they don't even look at them. And it kind of just goes to their junk folder about what kind of updates and things they're supposed to be getting. No, so no, it's all impossible. Everything's, de everything's degenerating. All I know is the default yes. is Columbine is to, is to go in there as quickly as possible. And this because was a default stand down. The, hmm. They wanted to put the cameras here in Orlando. They wanted the police officers to have the cameras on them. And they said they didn't get the memo that it was a conflict of interest because what ended up happening was some of the people that sure. worked as police officers also worked as the vendor for the, the camera that they uh, No, the I hear you. Listen, I'm going to jump, but I appreciate your call. You know, here's all I know. They're trying to blame the Second Amendment and pass hate laws so none of us can say hurtful things so we don't stir the Muslims up, and that is antithetical to common sense. They brought in an invading force. They have a plan. They think they're going to be able to manage this plan and get us to run up the white flag. It's not going to happen. Margaret in Oklahoma, last caller. Go ahead. 
contrast, to contrast the um, the difference between the FBI and letting these jihadis do their thing, and in uh, throwing uh, innocent Americans into prison forever, that um, in uh, the case of uh, Schaefer Cox and Lonnie Vernon and Karen. Vernon, sure, I'm having trouble following everything you're saying. Uh, you're, you're, okay, I'll slow down. No, just I'll back off your phone a little bit. Okay. Um, the the thing was the the FBI had a mission to put uh, to uh, 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 go after conservatives before the Obamacare vote. Yes, yes, we got the secret documents first, and then it was all mainstream news that for the last six seven years they, they, there there is no Islamic terror. There is they're supposed to do no Islamic terror investigation because it doesn't exist. And then it's only lone wolf conservatives, libertarians, returning veterans, gun owners, which is a stand down. Have them go spy on people that have the lowest crime rate while you bring in all these folks that uh, can't get along with each other and kill their own people. Uh, so that's a great point. Is that what you're getting at? They, they made up a story that Schaefer Cox wanted to throw people, put a lot of people in their houses and burn them up, and that they wanted, he wanted to kill to the government for everyone, but these were entirely the FBI operatives. The Schaefer Cox says, no, that's not who we are. Sure, sure. I appreciate your call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you've got a little bit of a phone problem, so I'm not making everything you say, but yes, the leftist in the government created Elohim City. They bombed Oklahoma City. It's total proof that all the witnesses on that saw the feds in there with the bombs. Yeah, that's a big problem. What about false flags, uh, Mr. Bracken? What about the left staging events and blaming it on us. I mean, they're already blaming us for this Islamic attack. So that, I mean, in a way, that's a false flag. They let them in, they let them yeah. attack, then they blame us. I don't, I, it, it's, it's interesting, the false flag concept. You're not going to ever find a direct chain of, um, of, uh, in, of orders, uh, you know, with Hillary Clinton or Obama's initials on something. There's a terrific book and movie out in the 70s or 80s called The Parallax View. It's excellent. Where it, you, you set up a patsy. That's the premise of my first novel, Enemies Foreign and Domestic, which starts with a shooting into a stadium, precipitating a mass panic stampede, thousands of people going off the top deck and being crushed, blamed on assault weapons, which are then banned for the purpose of instigating a civil war. Um, in the in the case of of uh, more uh, um, uh, the thing that I could see now, like the LOM City situation, you find the, the wing nuts that are ready to go off, and you have cutouts and intermediaries supporting them, sort of parallax view uh, style. I have a short story called, called um, uh, uh, Professor Raoul X about a guy on his summer breaks who goes around finding lunatics that he's learned from his college classes asking people, you know, who's the wackiest person you ever met? And he goes and finds these people and steers them towards being assassins. You know, putting the giving them the weapon, the money. You know, the very fringe characters. Sirhan, Sirhan, just read the cover though. There's another shooter, but totally. they have the quack there. Well, Absolutely. Well, or, sure. Or, we uh, keep. I mean, Fast and Furious was a false flag. We caught them sure. in that. So, so, so the good news King. is, th they know we're onto them. Yeah, the 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 shooter for um, Martin Luther King, absolutely had help. There's no question. Uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Uh, James. Right. Uh, right. No question. The man was supported all the way through. Now, was that a CIA operation? Probably not. Probably a white but, supremacist but subgroup within the FBI. Three or four cutouts. Three or four steps of cutouts. Yeah, yep. But it, it, the thing that I would like everybody to keep it, the, the eye on the ball, the really big macro picture is the Constitution and the oath that everybody in the military and the police takes. It's either going to be Sharia law is supreme, meaning if you insult the Muslims, we're going to put you in jail for instigation or creating a public nuisance or what have you, mm. either that's going to be supreme, which is what Hillary wants. She wants that UN resolution 1618 outlawing free speech if it, if it angers Muslims, or it's the Constitution and the First That's right. Amendment. She's in the hip pocket of the radical Islamists. We'll be back. Stay with us. David Knight's going to be joining us straight ahead. All right. I'm going to hand the baton here to uh, Leanne McAdoo, Mr. Brackett, and Mr. Knight. And just go get ready for research for the nightly news tonight. It'll be expanded right through the week here. Uh, but just briefly, we're listener supported. I'm not throwing folks under the bus. We've been lightly staffed here during the summer because of so much happening with the election and the rest of it. But I don't normally say this special's ending and then we extend it for a week and then extend it again. They just didn't take the special down. So I told them, because the manufacturer is about to run out anyways. I told him to get rid of this special tomorrow morning. So heads are going to roll if this doesn't go away by tomorrow morning.
and, and the only reason I'm telling that story is I don't say this is going away and then it doesn't go away. This is just falling through the cracks, so you can take advantage of it. The Alexa Pure Breeze, groundbreaking ion cluster technology. That's just one of the four filters in it. And why it's so special is it runs really, really quiet, almost silent. On its silent mode, it, it isn't as effective in that mode, obviously. But I've bought units that are close to $1,000 two years ago that are the same specs. So a lot of this is prices have gone down. But leading competitors of this are 400 bucks. This is $184.95, normally $249. But introducing the Alexa Pure Breeze, the same folks that bring you the Alexa Pure water filtration systems at InfoWarsStore.com, were able to offer 26% off the already incredibly low price that will end tomorrow. So if you've been on the fence and been waiting and procrastinating, now is the time to take action. And finally, folks know this. You can go, look, one run of this, it was gone for six months because it's got 27 ingredients. And again, California had lawyers pass standards so hardcore that there's more lead in the air than there is in an apple. So we have to really work hard to, to, to try to hit California standards. And when you're doing 27 ingredients, it takes a long time. This one took six months. I told them, hey, if it keeps doing this, take a few ingredients out, okay? And we'll just change the label each time. It'll be a new formula every time. I'm not going to not have the product. But it really is one of the best uh, parasite cleanses out there. Uh, it's, it's safe, effective from the research we've done. Everything that's in this is seen as, uh, you know, FDA, grass certified, which just means in a law, it's a recognized herb that's seen as safe. But still consult your physician before you even walk outside your house. You know, you got to do that because... You know, lawyer said so. Uh, before you breathe air, in fact, oxygen may not be good for you. you know, consult a physician before you before you breathe. But this sucker is amazing. You take it for six weeks. Uh, smaller person, one or two pills a day. A bigger person, three pills a day. And you can do a six-week cleanse with one bottle. And a lot of amazing things happen in my life. I can tell you that right now. Along with the liver cleanse, along with the other products. At InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-888. 253-3139. The umbrella site is InfoWarsStore.com. And I want to thank everybody for your support, whether you're getting vitamin mineral fusion, multivitamin juice drink, fruit punch flavored, or whether you're getting the joint and bone formula or brain force or anthroplex or secret 12 or the knockout sleep formula that people really rave about. I mean, I saw 1995 for a bottle of melatonin about three years ago. I said, let's get organic melatonin and let's get L-tryptophan and let's get uh, valerian root and all these other known healthy things that make you sleep good. Let's have it all be full dose, take it together, and call it knockout. One pill just helps me sleep really good if I need it. Two will knock you out. I've talked to one crew member, couldn't sleep. I just have, took three, slept for about 14 hours. So <laughs> it's all seen as generally safe, but obviously, uh, you know, <laughs> look out when you're taking knockout. It's not a game. But I want to thank all of you that support the broadcast. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, 10% off when you sign up for auto ship on any item and free shipping on orders of $50 or more at InfoWarsStore.com. Okay, uh, going now to uh, David Knight in the Situation Room to take over the Han showing of this. I want to thank Mr. Bracken for being with us. He'll be with us till the end of the hour. And I want to thank Leanne McAdoo for all she's done. And just want to let you know we've got reporters all over the world right now tracking what's happening. I'm going to go into the uh, one of the research areas and try to really coalesce what's happening and, and, and try to make some major moves. Uh, we've got some of the best sources you can get, so I'm going to try to really uh, relay uh, in the next 24 hours to folks exactly what I think is going on. Uh, so I want to thank you all for tuning in today. But go ahead, David Knight, take over. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. You know, when I was listening to what you were saying about Fast and Furious, uh, we know, of course, that Fast and Furious was exposed. Even the New York Times said it was a false flag shipping guns across the border in an effort to subvert the Second Amendment. And, of course, tied into that is the U.N. Arms Trade Treaty. But now what we have with Obama is we now have gunmen who are being shipped across the border as a false flag operation to attack the Second Amendment. That's essentially what we're seeing here with the open borders, with the increased immigration that we have, and with the attacks on the Second Amendment. And I want to point out to people what's going on in the U.N. I think it's very... It's very difficult to try to get people to stand up for individual liberty. On the right, they stand strongly for the Second Amendment, but they don't understand what's happened with the war on drugs. On the left, they're starting to see the futility and, uh, of the war on drugs, and yet they will not stand for the Second Amendment. We understand prohibition isn't going to work, but also understand, and people on the right need to understand this as well, the UN 
created the war on drugs. They laid out the four schedules. They put all the drugs in those four schedules in 1961, 10 years before Richard Nixon declared it. So what's happening right now in the U.N. with this U.N. arms trade treaty, with all the regulations that they're doing, and of course it was just this last week. They're meeting now. They began meeting last week. Uh, this is the sixth biennial meeting, so they meet every two years. And uh, it's interesting that it seems like uh, every time they meet nearly, we have a massive shooting event. I was there in New York uh, back in 2012 as they were moving to push it at that point in time. And it looked like uh, they had, there was a lot of talk about it at that point in time. Things were coming to a head. But of course, Fast and Furious had just been exposed prior to that. And so then they started losing momentum. And then interestingly enough, we had the Aurora, Colorado shooting that happened at that point in time. They thought they were going to get some momentum out of that. But instead, you had firearms soar through the roof, firearm sales. And, of course, even before this happened, it was reported that for the last 13 months, 13 months in a row, we've had an all-time high in gun sales. How do we know that? It's from the FBI doing background checks. Background checks. That's the one thing that we haven't seen out of all this. As they're talking about gun control regulation, and I want to get, get this comment from uh, Matt Bracken, our guest. Uh, Matt, they want to push uh, background checks, and yet this shooter worked eight years for the largest security firm in the world. And during that time, he was investigated three times by the FBI for background checks. In spite of all that, he continues to hold not only his position as a security guard, with a company that guards all kinds of things like uh, federal buildings, nuclear reactors, that sort of thing. But he also has, in the state of Florida, a security officer license in Florida, as well as a statewide firearms license in Florida. So he's been investigated by the state government. He's been investigated by the FBI. Why was he investigated by the FBI? Well, because he was uh, part of a mosque where a suicide bomber for al-Nusra blew himself up in uh, Syria. And, of course, uh, FBI Director James Comey has talked about that, said, uh, well, you know, we did these investigations because we're looking at people who are at the mosque. Uh, and we also had concerns from witnesses who said that uh, he was very interested in videos by Anwar al-Awlaki, uh, who Obama killed with a drone strike in 2011. But here's the interesting quote from Politico. Comey said, the witness said that Martin's marriage, his child, and his job as a security guard assuaged all those fears. So in spite of the fact that he's got all these radical connections, he gets a pass. So what's your comment on that, Matt? Well, the more Muslims that they bring in, refugees, quote unquote, the more we're going to see this. And even down the generations, because if you the ones that we bring in, they might really be trying to just get away from Islam. But if their kids go to the mosque and get radicalized, they'll wind up being the next Mateen. Liberals want to attack tools. You can't uninvent gunpowder and steel. That's if right. we can't buy them, we'll make them. I went during a break. I just wanted to see, could I get there and back in like a minute? And I could. I went and I grabbed my own. Uh, this is my little Second Amendment militia tool. It's never assaulted anybody. It just shoots steel. I've shot a lot of steel. In fact, in a weekend, it can shoot cases of it. And uh, it's just my militia Second Amendment weapon. If General Petraeus, if Hillary Clinton, if any of them think that myself, former, former naval officer, former Navy SEAL, I'm not good enough to own it, I shouldn't own it, because in their mindset, humans are just very fallible, prone to going crazy, because we're just emotional wrecks, so we have to take the tools away. It's not going to work. There are millions of these out. Well, I think Already. they're telling everybody that you're okay as long as you're wearing a uniform, as long as like the, the government has Orlando. done a background check on you. And, of course, they did multiple background checks on him. Everybody gave him a pass. The state government gave him a pass. The world's largest private security gave him a pass. The FBI gave him a pass. What kind of background check are we going to do? And we're not doing any background check on these people that we're bringing in from these uh, countries that are at war with each other and with us. Well, they're trying to force the sheep, the sheeple among us, to declare war on a tool. Yeah. Instead of declaring war on the human heart, this is where it's going to happen. You're either a good person or a bad person. Myself, I consider myself a sheepdog, armed or unarmed you know, pistol, knife, whatever, I'm not going to just sit there and watch evil happen. 
and I'm certainly not going to be disarmed at the door by a, a search warrant party or any other kind of a party. Uh, if In that case, if it happened to me, I know that there are hundreds of people that that would be taken as a signal. It's just not going to happen. Now, if they try something like that, I expect it to be under the cover or the smoke screen of some big national emergency where the power goes out. You that know, we, sounds like a good plan, but it won't work. That's trying to ride the tiger. Read what I saw at the coup. All the guys in federal law enforcement, they know what I'm talking about. You can guard the, 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 the SES class. That's the senior executive service. Those are the civilian generals that really run the government, not the congressmen. The, the SES class think they're protected. But the way that it works, they're guarded by pr outlying perimeters. If you can't get the, the tyrant in charge, you just start plinking at their outer perimeter. And then pretty soon the guards decide they're not going to stick around to guard a tyrant. And then the tyrant's got to go on the run like so-and-so over there in Bilderberg. It's just not going to work. But my fear is the power goes out and then it's going to be game on. And when, if, if and when that happens, we're going to rely on our, our adherence to the Constitution, our American values, and we're going to fall back on the wonderful special operations training that we've been given. And not only have we been given wonderful special operations training, I have been to civilian uh, shooting clubs where we've gone way beyond what I was doing, you know, a generation ago in SEAL Team, and it, literally, in terms of firearms. I tell people, look, they say, wow, Matt, you were a SEAL? I say, you guys are shooting better than we did. You've got better tools. You've got better training. So the people that think that they could possibly take our weapons away, they must be smoking LSD because it's not going to happen. Well, I think what they're trying to do in terms of the information war, and I want to get uh, Leanne's comments on this because I, I find it very interesting that the Obama administration is pushing the LGBT agenda so heavily and yet, here we have these same Democrats who are pushing the LGBT agenda. They're working very hard to bring in a group of people that hate the LGBT crowd worse than anyone who was natively in this country. That's the amazing thing to me. And to me, that says right there, besides the fact that they're shipping gunmen in across the borders instead of guns, they are trying to... Uh, create this issue. Before I get a comment from you, Leanne, let's take a look at this NRA video because this is something we were going to play last Tuesday. We were covering the primaries because out in California, of course, there are massive gun control laws that are being uh, queued up to run through. And Time Magazine reported, and this was over a week ago, ju just about a week and a uh, day or so, new anti-gun control ads from the NRA seek to rally women and LGBT voters. And what they did was they produced a video that was take away our rights, take away our life. And here, one week later, it is absolutely amazing how prescient that was. But of course, we've been saying this all along. They were just putting this video out. They're going to run it in areas of California that had a large concentration of LGBT Californians. First, they showed it with a woman being attacked in a uh, parking lot garage and she defends herself with a gun. And then they showed the, shot the same video. And instead of it being a woman, they had an LGBT person. Let's, let's uh, show this uh, ad right now. Okay, so you see this person walking out. Now this one is the LGBT person coming out, walking into a deserted parking lot garage, looking around, it's shot in black and white, very dark. Guy rushes up uh, as they're starting to put the key in the car, starts attacking. And this person reaches into their purse, pulls out a pistol, and pulls the trigger. And then the, the uh, tagline says, take away our rights, take away our life. Your comments, Leanne. I mean, that is just so powerful, and that's what I think. I think the gay community uh, is waking up to the fact that they have been being used by this progressive agenda. And you were really starting to see with this whole, uh, with this massacre, where their allegiance actually lies. It's not to support your group, it's to push their agenda. And they're willing, even the activists in the LGBT community are willing to throw their own group under the bus uh, at yeah. the altar of political correctness. I think it's amazing that they would be bringing in people who think that murdering, the they say that they support LGBT people, right? Mm -hmm. So then they're bringing in totally unvetted, I mean, no background checks for these people, totally unvetted, 
people whose religion says that they're doing a service to Allah to kill these people. And, of course, uh, now Obama says, no, 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 he was a homegrown terrorist. Yeah, he was homegrown at the radical mosque uh, that uh, it, that he attended. But and several it, trips to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Where would he get the idea that he ought to kill uh, homosexuals, okay, uh, by going to Saudi Arabia where he sees them cutting off their heads, mm -hmm. throwing them off of buildings? Of course right. he's going to get that idea from them. But I think it's also interesting to see that we've got Senator Ed Markey, and of course he's the other senator from Massachusetts besides Elizabeth Warren. He came out and he said this guy was radicalized by the Internet. So there mm -hmm. you go. It's the Internet that radicalized him, not Islam. They can't blame Islam. It was the internet. So we got to get our give up our First Amendment as well as our Second Amendment. And presumably, I guess, Leanne, the internet radicalized his gun. You know, the AR-15 right. somehow got radicalized. It transformed itself from Locked a semi-automatic into a full automatic. It then magically transported itself to the scene of the crime and started shooting people on its own. I guess that is the narrative that the left is going to try to sell us at this point. It's a, it's a classic, this is a classic disruption operation. They're bringing in a wedge, driving it into our society. Yes. In order to fracture the society, and the solution is going to be the loss of fr our freedom. Mm -hmm. We're going to attack the tools. We're, they're going to attack the tools, and they're going to attack our means of communication in the name of social stability. Yes. But I got to go back to the Constitution. We have a First Amendment. That means we can say anything we want that's about Islam, and if the Muslims go freak out about it, that's not our problem. It's either Sharia law is on top or our Constitution is on top. But I know that all the generals and on down, they took an oath to the Constitution. Hang on, Matt. we got to take law. a commercial break. We're going to be right back with Matt Bracken, Leanne McAdoo, and I'm David Knight. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo and Matt Bracken. His website is enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. As we were going to break, we were talking about, as, as Matt characterized it, the, uh, uh, the perfect operation where you come after our tools of self-defense and you shut down our communications by attacking the First Amendment. We've had Senator Markey from Massachusetts come out and say the problem with this guy was he was radicalized by the Internet. Now, they're not talking about who he talked to on the Internet, the man who was given early release from prison, who had been kept in solitary confinement because he was so effective at turning people into Islamic terrorists in prison. They put him in solitary confinement. He was one of the people involved with the original 9-11 attack. They gave him early release last year. Now he has a class uh, that he teaches, a seminar to uh, radicalize people. And so that's the problem, not the Internet. But, of course, they come after the Internet. They come after the gun, not the gunman. And I think it was interesting, earlier in the show, uh, Leanne, Alex was talking about how you were tweeting out to Kim Kardashian about the Armenian genocide. And it was just recently that we had Amal Clooney, the wife of George Clooney, who was a lawyer. She came after a guy who's from Turkey, tried to put him in jail because he was a genocide denier. Now, I believe there was an Armenian genocide, and, of course, the Armenian genocide was where that term was coined. It was a classic case of a genocide. But this guy, rather than argue with him, rather than uh, have a clash in the free market of ideas, Amal Clooney wanted to just shut him up and throw him into jail. And, of course, the liberal press and uh, held her out as the savior of everyone, uh, even though she lost the trial. They thought it was horrible that she couldn't Lock him up for his speech. You know, we have to allow all kinds of speech out there, and the truth can win out. But we cannot allow these people, like Amal Clooney, like Obama, like Senator Markey, to shut down our First Amendment. Your comment. Well, they're wanting, you can see where this is headed. They're going to want to be able to do that same thing with anyone who speaks out against Islam, who will dare yeah. utter the words radical Islam. Because when you have a president or a Hillary Clinton who refuses to acknowledge it, it allows people to continue to live in this delusion that it doesn't exist. And Isn't so it inter interesting that he would go, as the attack was happening, 30 minutes into the attack, he called 9-11 and said, pledged his allegiance to ISIS and so forth and so on, right? Mm -hmm. But for another 12 hours, they would not use the words terrorism or radical Islam or anything like that. We're even still not the, sure what the ties are. That's right. That's he hasn't right. made himself clear. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Matt. 
Yes, they're, 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 it's interesting. In the first press conference that they had it, it, just after dawn, the uh, Fox reporter, uh, Stephen Ducey, he happened to be in town because of the unfortunate, tragic shooting of the day before of the singer. So he happened to be there. They weren't going to address it at all. He brought up the question about, is there anything about Islamic uh, radicalism? And only then did the, F the bald FBI spokesman say, yeah, uh, it looks like it's heading in that direction. He wouldn't heading have in said that it direction. otherwise. <laughs> but they walked it back. Boy, he yeah. got he must have got his his uh, his uh, wrist slapped in the intervening intervening hours until the next press conference, because this FBI agent then walked it back and said, "Oh, we have no idea." The, the name of the guy, Mateen, had already been out for hours. Yeah, I'm, I got to talk to you guys, you you FBI guys, please. It stands for Federal Bureau of Investigation, but. In a lot of your T-shirts and logos, it also says fidelity, bravery, and integrity. If you have integrity, then you can't be a stooge like some kind of a, of a proto-Stasi agent mm. where you're just a Soviet apparatchik with a badge. That's right. If you have integrity, then you're not going to get orders from above to walk back the Islam portion. Absolutely so Mr. right, Matt. FBI of Orlando, we're watching we're out very of time. carefully. All you Sorry, guys. we're out of time, Matt. And that's Matt Bracken, enemies, foreign and domestic.com. Join us tonight for the InfoWars Nightly News, 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own, air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war. Pathogens added to the food and water and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality, turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands, and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.